All right, we're back with another episode of Speed Runs from the Crypt, the bi-weekly horror hotfix. And I hope you're all having a wonderful day today and a wonderful holiday. As we are approaching Christmas, we do hit the magical time of Christmas Eve. But before Christmas Eve, we have Parasite Eve, and I, make, I think I made that dumb joke last year, so I'll continue making it this year. I'll be diving into some of the spookiest games of the holiday season, which I guess is really just one of them, but there's plenty around the time of year anyway, because we had Last of Us earlier. Uh, as well, before we do begin, I just want to say, if you miss out on any of the GDU Hotfix shows, you can check out our archive of past shows at youtube.com slash gamesdonequick. I hope that you're all having a wonderful night tonight, and hope you're all having a wonderful day. Uh, yep, so the game, uh, game for today will be Parasite Eve. We have rather a shorter list today, but this game is rather long, so it'll be kind of fun to see it uh, the whole way through. There's been a lot of Parasite this month, and we'll have plenty more to come. Anyway, that being said, let's go into the game with Chris Naga running Parasite Eve. What's going on, GDQ and chat? How are you doing? I'm Chris uh, Naga, and beside me in my virtual couch, many, many miles away, boy, RJ S. Smangit. I added an extra S in there for you, RJ. But <laughs> hey, what's but going on? Right. Hey. <laughs> Sorry. <Yeah. laughs> you left me hanging there for a sec. <laughs> no, but I hope everyone's doing well. Um, this should be a treat as, as long as everything uh, goes well. Even if it doesn't, it'll still be a treat. But uh, yeah, uh, timer will go ahead and start in three, two, one, go. RJ, I don't know if you really want to kind of get into details. I, I know we want to get into details of the run, right? And the strats on what we do, but as a story <laughs> do we even want do we even want to attempt to explain what's going on or oh is it yeah just like, no. Ooh, the, that's the, the best part we need to we need to try and explain what is happening that is the best part about this game is trying well. to even remotely begin to explain the story but you know Christmas Eve, Parasite Eve. This game does take place over Christmas. The first day is on Christmas Eve. See, look at that. Merry Christmas, 1997. I feel old. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> no comment. So we do have a couple cutscenes coming up, too. Like, we have this one. It's about a minute. About a minute and eight seconds. And then uh, Chris gets to play for... I'd say about 50 seconds, and then we go into another cutscene. Our beautiful three minute and. But at least it's a doozy. Cutscene, probably. Yeah, it's a doozy of a cutscene, though. Very. Sets the tone early. <laughs> so, anybody who's familiar with, um, with running Resident Evil 7. We know that um, during Resident Evil 7 in the beginning, the cutscene with, um, oh man, what's her name? <laughs> Mia. Mia, I was gonna say Maya because of Aya. But uh, with <laughs> Mia, you know how when she says, hey baby, and everyone's soul just kind of like suck, like speedrunner, like their soul just gets sucked out of their you know system because they know they, they got to start over again. This is the equivalent of so, like, you know, anytime we hear the opera, we know that, it, all right, at Speedrunners, we either just start it or reset probably five or six times that day, <laughs> depending on what kind of RNG was given to us by bosses. It's a pretty sick bathroom break, though. <laughs> You know, yes, I, yes. I want to get chat rowdy right away. So Parasite Eve is absolutely a Christmas game, but I want to know, chat, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Yes. It's actually a Harry Potter movie. It's a Harry Potter movie? Yes, both. I think it is a Christmas version of Snape's Nightmare. We'll go into more detail later about that. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to touch the whole... That, I, mean, I don't want to go into just, that I, lore. You know, no, no, what, guys? I just wanted to talk about Die Hard, and you, got, you all took it to a crazy level. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> this is, is like a this is, is like is biopic it, level. Is it a right. good Christmas movie? Oh yes. Also, the run is live. Chat is pure recorded. We got that. Um, it has not even been three minutes. Wow. <laughs> we got that one fast. <laughs> <laughs> The better question, uh, though, is because uh, tomorrow I know they're doing the Night Before Christmas. Is that a Halloween movie or Christmas movie? Ooh. I, I have the actual answer, by the way. There is a confirmed answer. There is actual... There is a correct answer, yes. Oh. So you're asking if it's Halloween or Christmas? Yes. Ooh. Christmas. Chris? <sighs> I don't know. It's hard to tell, man. It, it, it's... I, I feel like it's a Halloween movie. Nope, it's Christmas. Oh, right. Is it? They don't even celebrate the holiday of Halloween. They have this weird parade, and then they forget the entire thing. It is, you can put the movie anywhere, it's still a Christmas movie. <laughs> it could be a bunch of goths chilling in the graveyard in the middle of November, it'd still be a Christmas movie. It has nothing to do with nice. Halloween. No trick-or-treating or anything. Insane. Oh, by, by the way, everybody's on fire. <laughs> oh, that's just with the lit holiday season. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This opera's lit. <laughs> that lady looks like the lady from Shark Tank. I always think that every time I see her. I do want to say so. Um, oh god. <laughs> no, I was gonna say now. Now we're we're finally six minutes in, and we're finally into How about that. Yeah. And uh, we're getting to the actual play style of the game. Which this game's pretty unique. It uh, kind of channels the idea of both horror and RPG together, and not a lot of games do this. So I definitely love being able to have it shown off. Which thank you again, both again for being here. Of thank course, you for having us. One thing uh, that had already happened that kind of was just a little glazed over. The first thing Chris did as soon as he got control of uh, Aya was change her gun from using the gun to the club, uh, which we will use for the entirety of day one, all the way until the boss. You see that right now, and there's there's a few reasons for that. One, the ATB is very quick. It's and uh, the damage is uh, pretty similar to the the gun we have at this point, anyway. And it saves us some ammo. Ammo is not as big of a deal as it used to be, but it kind of is again with the updated strats that we will be using. But here you go, first showdown with Eve, just a. Uh, a good old fisticuffs match. Yes, we are, like um, RJ was saying, when we normally ran this, like when I first started, um, RJ first started, and a couple of the old OG runners, um, the strat is def was a, a little bit different from what we are going to um, use today. Uh, we're going to use what they call the hammer strat. And um, that just means... During day three, one of the weapons we normally use, which would be the M11, we go ahead and put the machine gun to two burst instead of its original five. Well, we're going to switch that up a bit. We're going to end up leaving it to five, but we're going to be using the other guns to put to beef up the strength attribute, um, your attack attribute. We're going to be doing picking up a couple of extra items on day two as well so that goes that goes ahead and contributes to more attack power um but yeah shout out to um crazy awesome by the way who's world record holder he he put a lot of time and effort into this to uh to, to find it i don't know how <laughs> but you know shout out to him because it, it definitely saves a lot of time um and I've been seeing a lot more people run the game, which has been great, you know. And I think what really sparked the change in routing is that he likes to do uh, pistol percent runs, starter pistol percent runs. So he was picking up a lot of chests, a lot of other things just to enhance the first pistol to get through the game. And he started to realize that there was a lot of extra points sitting around. And then he started fiddling kind of with just, just a little bit with the distribution of the uh, points we'll get for leveling up and whatnot and turns out he uh struck something good because it it does it does uh affect the route it makes it a little bit faster than it used to be so at this part i hope i hope none of you really enjoy pokemon because that was pokemon gone wrong 
right? <laughs> uh, has evolved into something very horrible. And uh, yeah. That's his low in form. That's his low in form. <laughs> Poor rat. Or whatever the world sun and uh, whatever the moon sword and shield or world sword and shield is in. I have right. No idea. I really like the the cut the FMZ, the FMV cutscenes in this game. I think they still hold up pretty well, as far as. Uh, I, I think this game in general holds up pretty well. Like surprisingly well. Um, I don't know the the pre render. I guess you would call it the pre rendered backgrounds. Like is, is that what we would call what most of the background is? Um, yeah, it's definitely like a pre rendered static background. I don't know. Like I I I think that's a, a really good touch for for the game itself. That's the way just Square liked to operate back then. Mm. Most of the, like, FF7 had a lot of pre-rendered backgrounds. This game has a lot of pre-rendered backgrounds. Even FF8. So it's just kind of like the style they were using at the time. Here we are. We get to fight Eve again. This time she's gonna look uh, slightly different. <laughs> just, just minor. Minor differences. She had a manicure, and, uh... New dress. And, yeah. and new legs. Yes, we call that a mind detector that just kind of popped out of the end of the... Yeah, we'll leave it alone. <laughs> Frankly, I think she looks great. <laughs> Wonderful. But, you know, we're still using the club here, so this fight, uh, it's a little wacky. It's with a lot of RNG with how Eve moves around, but it is manipulatable, if you want to, if that's even a word. Um, Eve will attack basically. She'll move, and then she'll move again, and then she'll attack. And if you're in her face, she'll smack you, which is a very dangerous attack. But if you're yeah. at, like a little bit away, like as you see Chris here, she'll just wind up with this laser beam attack that's super, super telepath or uh, telegraphed, sorry, and easy to dodge. Oh, huh, there goes yeah, the melee. That, that kind of hurts. And then that's another miss. That's all right. We'll we'll chill back here for a bit. <laughs> yeah, that that was one one hit shy, right? Spooky. Yeah, so that's that's exactly why you don't really want to get meleeed cuz uh if you're unlucky enough to get crit, it does 27 damage and I don't know if you were paying attention to his health value, but it's only mm -hmm. 45. So two crits will kill you. There were times getting into this fight as well that uh I somehow ended it with uh I think with 1 HP left. So mm -hmm. it, it can get very dicey early. So we're gonna take this time to heal. For sure, good call. And then we'll go ahead into this hole that she has made that will lead us into the sewers underneath. <laughs> Makes one hole, go straight into the sewer system. Mm-hmm. Couple more fights here. The rats are now one shottable. The first rat took two. Mm. Number one thing you'll notice too is that like enemies, when you touch them in fights, they have contact damage. Comes into play in the fights. Contact damage can leave you stun locked for a little bit. Could be dangerous. It's generally minor inconvenience, but you know, if you're running low on HP and you get stun locked, it could lead to some bad times. Especially this frog right here likes to troll a lot. So if you haven't noticed the last <laughs> round, I I healed up. Like I used the med one. Um just by the simple fact that if he crits, he he can hit you with a nice twenty-seven to, you know, somewhere in the thirties, I believe. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know how I got hit with a thirty one time, but so since then, I respect his damage, and if, especially a marathon run, I'm going to play it super safe in here, but he made it very, very easy for me this time around, so that's good. And I saw in chat, just again, real quick, we're using the club because it has a fast ATB, it'll conserve ammo for us, and the damage value is about the same as the gun. So, I mean, it's basically the same thing, but it's just... 
Faster. <laughs> wow, you got two offense plus twos. Uh, that's <laughs> never really a good sign. <laughs> well, you're definitely going to be doing some beefy damage next, next yeah, round. I'm hoping. All right, right here, we're going to try what they call a frog skip. Um, I'm just going to hug that. All right, we got it. So, yeah. RJ, if you want to go ahead and explain that as we head to our first boss. Okay, well, the the to start a fight, there's like a trigger. I'm assuming it's like a trigger zone. Um, for some reason in this room, if you kind of rub against that pillar and whatnot, Chris, Chris did the safety strap, made sure he was definitely wedged up in there. If you get yourself mm -hmm. wedged against the wall, you can just like walk straight past the trigger. Uh, it's the only fight in the game we're aware of where this works. But it's a nice little time save. Uh, it saves about mm, probably almost 40 seconds worth of time when you put everything together. The fight, remenuing your gun or reloading your gun, healing, mm. anything like that. So it's actually a really nice time save right off the bat. Not only that, running in this game is horrible. Like if you try to run uh, nine times out of 10, well, at least for me, you will never escape. Like it just says fail to escape. Yeah, it's literally game. one and of the then, worst run mechanics of any game that ever existed ever. Yeah, so you're just better off just fighting it through um, if you go ahead and not get the skip, but it's all right. So here's boss number one, Papa Croc. We like to call him my stream. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and kind of take it easy real quick. RJ, right. if you want to explain. Yeah, sure. Uh... This fight, it lets you know there's two targets right away, how helpful of the game. But you'll notice Chris is gonna go to the left and he's gonna wait kind of until the gator moves like that. And what he's trying to do is he's trying to bait out that shockwave attack. So he's gonna keep moving to the left, waiting for the movement and then going back to the right. Uh, with good timing, uh, he'll dodge the shockwave attacks. And then what you wanna do with the gators, you wanna shoot the tail first. It tells you there's two targets. It's because it wants you to do something specific. And that specific thing is to get the tail. So really good first phase. After three turns, you go into the second phase where you kind of just unload on the gator now. You want to unload on its face. If you were to shoot the face in the first phase, the gator goes into like a rage frenzy and chases you all around the screen trying to melee you. So you want to avoid that as much as possible. Once you get to the second phase, uh, the gator can do one of two attacks. It can do the fire blast that we just saw, or it can kind of run you down and give you a good old melee. Both attacks are pretty easy to dodge, just the melee is a little slower sometimes if you have to actually go ahead and dodge it but just like that not too much difficulty for chris here it was very clean and uh he gives the gator a good shellacking and we're done with day one just got some cutscenes. sweet papa croc has not killed me today so That's Merc, what's i know i saw you in chat Merc, who's uh one of my mods he he likes to he likes to definitely, you know, give Papa Croc some love and hope <laughs> for the best for him on day one. So uh, you're lost today, buddy. <laughs> I actually, I also have people who root for the Gator in my stream. It's a weird, a weird <laughs> thing. <laughs> I don't know why. I saw, this, I saw this meme where it's like. Uh, I think it was the one where it says, I have met my friends on Twitch who became, or I met people on Twitch who became my friends, and then they add it to where it's like, but then I made them a mod and now they're a troll. <laughs> 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 That's what I feel like uh, what happens sometimes. <laughs> you know, after but Gator yeah. here, we in this cutscene, we get introduced to Daniel, our uh, IS partner. I love Daniel. Daniel's like one of yes. my favorite characters. Packs a punch. <laughs> <laughs> That's one dad joke. You get you get two more, and then we're cutting you off. <laughs> get, okay, okay. <laughs> if you if you are also not aware, and I like to do, you know, I'm a dad, so I like to do a lot of dad jokes, throw a lot of dad jokes out there. So that that I may try to sneak a quick one, two, maybe three in there. So. <laughs> Access to go back to the opera again. No, sir. So yeah, that's that's day one. I think day the first two days 
are kind of the hardest and not difficulty wise. I think when you're running this game, it's very long. Um, it, I feel like one and two combined has a lot of the majority of dialogue. Now, unless I'm wrong, you know, you guys can you can correct me, RJ, or even Eck, because I know you run this too, Eck. Um, but the first two are very, very dialogue heavy. Mm -hmm. You don't really, you don't really start to get much action until I would say the second half of this day, heading to towards day three. Um, did I just say the first? No, I think the the first two days and a half actually mm -hmm. is pretty pretty rough. Yeah. So I mean, you saw right away. So day one was about eighteen ish minutes. We spent uh, five of it in cutscenes. Yeah. <laughs> and then we come to day two immediately we're about to go back into more cut scenes kind of thing so uh, really for the first two days you probably play the game for about 30 ish minutes of the run and then the rest of it is cut scenes so you're not wrong it's very uh exposition heavy early on you know it could be a little a little tedious to do over and over again in a single stream. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's not too bad as far. Like, mashing in this game is capped. You can, at, at a certain point, your mashing speed doesn't matter anymore. So it, it's not super difficult on the hands. Um, Pretty casual. But I like to space out hard during these parts. I just sit there <laughs> and I'm like... Staring into, off into space, wondering what I'm going to do later. Wondering when I'm going to die to worms. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't worry. Worms is uh, worms is on its way. So right now, we're going to go through our first eh, menuing portion of this. All right, that was all right. I used the first med, so we didn't have it there. Um, menuing doesn't... It, it doesn't matter as much, I would say. Um, there are a couple parts of the run that it is crucial where you want to make sure you have spaces um, available because um, you can, and I've done this a lot, to where I've skipped a couple items. I have threw away a couple items for items that was full or, or like the items that I needed to get, but the inventory was full. Um, during the end of a battle, we were just talking about this before we hopped on. There is a gun that is crucial at the end of day five, a day five boss. And if you're full on inventory and you go ahead and just mash through X, you can easily skip that gun. And that can put a hamper on a run pretty much. So, Yeah, I, the menuing is important to do correctly, but... If you're just trying to speed run the game, that's all really your focus needs to be on for quite a while mm -hmm. is just doing things correctly. Because if, if you've played this game casually, you've probably familiar, like if you, you can build a gun that is just bad. And that's kind of how the whole battle system is based around is just what gun I is using. There's not other party members. There's not other, I don't know what to say. There's not like there's not a way around it. So if like, if you make a crappy gun that doesn't serve you well, the game is going to be immensely difficult. So hopefully we'll be avoiding some of those issues. There's things we could do that could probably fix it out if we put our heads to it. But usually like a miss menu of the wrong tooling of a gun is kind of like a ripperino and you got to try again, but mm. I'm sure none of that's going to happen today. Chris is sharper than ever. <laughs> he's been doing push-ups he's been doing uh, curls that's uh, that's what we're hoping <laughs> day one down five more days to go <laughs> Wait, what do they you know what they say first day worst day kind of thing right the game's easy from now on well i think i, I think at this game it's like the first two days are the worst days and then then you can kind of have a breather a bit before everything else kind of Put you back on panic mode. Yeah, I mean, so 
most of the game is it's pretty difficult i was just joking <laughs> most of the bosses <laughs> in this game will give you the business if you're not prepared for it a lot some some uh, individual enemies can really give you the business too if you're not ready for it yeah you know here we are still in uh cutscene land we're heading over to the museum because um Eve, Eve, while we're in day one, mentions mitochondria, whatever. She mentions, they, they mention mitochondria a lot in this game. If you didn't know, it's the powerhouse of the cell. But she mentions mitochondria and uh, everybody congregating in the police station. Uh, the one guy, I forget his name, I think it's Werner. I think that's Werner or Nix. I can't remember which one it is. But he mentions that there's a scientist at the museum who's like an expert in mitochondria and like cellular nonsense. Mm. So we're going to talk to him. You also realize that in 98, New York City traffic was great because Daniel <laughs> was speeding through light speed and with no traffic, <laughs> no horns honking or anything else going on. So, yeah, it must have been great back then. Yeah, Daniel is legit kind of wacky. <laughs> Goes 150 <laughs> at all times. Punching reporters, driving his car way too fast. He, he was living the dream back in 98. <laughs> right. I only have one speed, and it's fast. I don't think I count that as a dad joke, so I'm still at number one. Oh, no, we're counting it. Oh. <laughs> we we got to keep very <laughs> fine tabs on you. <laughs> oh. It'll get out of hand if we don't. <laughs> Here you go. They're they're going upstairs, but the the guard, or I don't know if he's the guard or just like the, every, what do you call the person who? I, I think he's just like a guard or a janitor. He makes you sign in, and Daniel's like, I'm not doing that. You sign in, Aya. So you have to go make a little detour and sign in. <laughs> but it's really yeah, I he's I, a janitor. I, yeah, probably like a janitor or something. I like the dynamic between Aya and Daniel. They're like they're like good partners. The dialogue is very earnest and. uh he trusts her a lot, even though she's trying to explain this fantastical event that happened. And a lot of people don't believe her right now, but he kind of always believes her from the jump. So that's also one of my favorite qualities about Daniel. He's just he's just a homie. He's a friend. I think it, I think it's really sad that we don't see Daniel in the other two. Like, you know, you have you have Kyle, who's introduced in part two and then carried over to part three. But Daniel, you don't really he, this is it. He's one and done. And, you know, kind of, it kind of stinks because you'd like to see more Daniel, but we all know how, we all know how it goes with the rest of the PE games. It doesn't do so. Oh, PE2, I, I think, was okay. But it, three it, was it. unique. Ah, uh, wow. Unique is the word you're going with, huh? <laughs> We're, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with unique. Okay. <laughs> hey, you're, you're the runner. I'm not a little <laughs> let you let it go. Right? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> we like to keep it family friendly. You know, they're talking in the museum here. They were talking to Clamp, and Aya brings up that Eve mentioned mito, the mitochondrial Eve. Uh, and, and Clamp kind of loses his mind. He's like, yeah, I got to go back to my work and you guys got to leave. So suspicious. Suspicious from Clamp here. Definitely doesn't look like a bad guy. But back at the police station, we're going to go into like the uh, conference room where they were earlier and to kind of like one more briefing on where Melissa Pierce might be, who is the person that Eve takes over. Uh, Melissa Pierce was scheduled to do a concert in Central Park. And um, Daniel, that was the little event with Ben. It kind of got glossed over again. The little small child in the red jumpsuit and shorts in the middle of the winter. Um, <laughs> he's going to a concert in Central Park with his mom and once Daniel learns about this lady being in Central Park, he kind of loses it and runs out. He's like, I got to go save them. And that's literally where we're at. But we'll see our so first to... big gun menu from Chris here. Sorry, yeah, yeah I don't want to step on your toes. No, you're good. You're good. 
He's gonna take the gun we used on day one. Well, first he's gonna, I do this in a little bit of a different order, but it doesn't matter, we'll get to the same point. He's gonna equip his new vest that he got from the gator. He's gonna put the stats from his gun onto the new gun that uh, Torres gave, uh, or Wayne gave, uh, uh, Torres, Torres. One of those gun. guys. Yeah, yeah, Torres is the one who gave you the gun now. Uh, so basically, a lot of the a lot of the menuing revolves around taking the gun you're using and putting the stats that uh, we add to it and its bonus stats that it comes with it, and we're transferring it to every new gun that we want to use. And we kind of, because all of the offense ups and range ups and bullet capacities, all that stuff, we'll keep transferring as long as we transfer those stats to the gun, the new gun we're using. And that's kind of the main focus of how we keep powered up. <laughs> The main thing, the main thing in this game is uh, it, it creates a snowball effect. You want to keep making sure that we add the attack, you know, make sure we keep that snowball room because any, any crucial part, any mistake, that's the one thing about this game is it may seem a bit easy when you run, um, I think running it wise, but you can easily kill a run by misconfiguring a gun and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta pay. You gotta pay attention when you're going through those menus. For sure. Here we are at Central Park. Uh, Daniel wants to run headfirst into Central Park because you know it's his his ex wife and his child in there. He wants to go save them, but as soon as he gets close, he gets a little burn. Uh, that's one of the things that Eve. One of Eve's power is is she kind of can control people's mitochondria around her, and one of those things she does is she can tell mitochondria or cells to combust so if you get too close she can basically explode you for whatever reason uh, so daniel can't go in but aya knows she's not affected by it just from the events of the first day she's the only survivor so she's like oh, i'll do it which is good because i mean she has the big gun nice the offense plus two double time already going into effect here <sighs> And what's beautiful. nice, yeah. And what's nice about at least getting one offense plus two that first snake, the big red one, um, will die in two shots no matter what. If you were only get one offense plus one from both chests, you would have to hope for a crit, or else it would take a third shot. And something with the optimization of this run is keeping track of your bullets, how much bullet, how many bullets you fired, especially in this day, because it's a lot more controlled. But having to take extra shots at certain times will force you to open up menus to unload or reload the gun all sorts of things Chris fighting some crows here uh, these birds are like the worst they don't they either could give you a medicine or they have like a high chance of draw, uh, just giving you junk and while junk is useful in the game for certain things, it is not useful at all to the run and is just an inventory clogger. So you want to make sure you pick up as you don't want to pick up any junk at all. And if you do pick it up, you want to make sure you get rid of it before you need things that are important. You see, he grabs the Zuki here. He's also going to grab a gun, kind of like a little secret in here. This is this is something that's new to the route is grabbing that gun. Basically, it's a short distance out of the way, but what we're going to do is menu its stats into our gun right away as long as you get a tool here this chest is 80 20 80 percent 20 percent to 80 percent to get a tool 20 percent to get ammo luckily he got the tool Please. should i get the right one yep and now that he did that his gun should be able to one shot birds with a crit which is kind of nice, because if you can get lucky enough to get a crit, it basically can melt turns away from these fights going forward. I'm going to try to attack him first. Yeah, do whatever uh, do whatever right, feels good. right. Nice, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> right. So I think your double offense plus two in the beginning there is what really helps you two-shot that guy. Mm -hmm. Unlucky, no crits on the birdies. That's all right. That's still just a two-turner. Chat, I want your best guesses. What is the red thing, the red creature he's fighting? What do you think that is? 
I want to hear from you. <laughs> she great polls. What is this creature? Yeah, what is he fighting right now? We got more snakes and crows. Snakes are actually pretty scary. Oh, son of a gun. That's not what I wanted to do. That's okay. Uh. I would probably heal up <laughs> just in case. I'm going. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it down to the wire, but he got through. Yeah, so he, case in point, snakes are very scary because they can poison you, and poison ticks away very quickly. Uh, Especially in the early game. Yeah, if he came into that fight with any less health, he probably would have died. Yeah. <laughs> but Chris, Chris is a legend, and he wasn't about to let that happen, so we're in the clear. No, I just like to keep everyone on their toes, that's all. <laughs> including myself <laughs> and so one thing we missed while we were talking about the snake poison Chris took after you level up sometimes you'll get these skill points and what Chris did he took the first one he put that into his gun we'll be taking all the points from this day and putting it into the gun but after that going forward we'll start putting our points into active time bar which affects the speed that the VAR fills up to get to his turns so what the hammer route did is kind of redistributed the balance of offenses we use and how often, because it used to be up until we had 31 points into active time, we would be putting all of our points into active time, but we redistributed a little bit. We're going to put some of that into, uh, we're going to put the early points into offense to help with some damage rolls <clears throat> on the enemies in the early game. Here we go, we get a nice, uh, pleasant cutscene again. <laughs> <laughs> this is another power of Eve, so she has the mitochondria. She can have them spontaneously combust, or she can basically just tell the, the cells of the body to leave the body. And uh, that's what that scene was about. That's all basically their cellular structures leaving their body to create a big mitochondrial goo ball. AKA Jello. Yeah, Jello. If you guys or... are a fan of Jello. That is what it's made of, mitochondria. <laughs> <laughs> I knew I didn't like Jello. <laughs> Everybody's like, oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, who, who let us on here, man? <laughs> All right, get rid of that runner. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we, we get to confront her on the stage again. Doesn't care at all for some we like to point the gun and never shoot it <laughs> he's gun sees i don't she's like here we are clicks the gun never. he's like well i'm out of here <laughs> just flies away so we're gonna go for one of the biggest safety strats here which even during a run we would go ahead and pick this up <clears throat> we at least would like to have one revive at yeah. least one revive and uh the first one is right there Second one comes at the end of, um, or in the beginning of day three. But getting that during a run, getting that will just kind of depend on if we use it on day two or not, right? Because for us, you want faster time. You, you don't want to go ahead and just spend the couple seconds to to get another, you know, revive. But, um... If you really want to be safe, yeah, you'll go ahead and grab both of them. Which is a good idea for the marathon. It's like I was saying, pretty much any <laughs> boss in this game can pop off and ruin your life. Yes. There you go, Chris. Uh, so, sort of another different route change here for day two. If we were to get the first tool that Chris got really early on, when I was talking about the 80-20 drop chance for the tool we would actually not grab this tool anymore but since we go out of our way to grab a gun to do an earlier menu for more offense we need to go grab that secondary tool so we can have it for later here we go this is probably in my opinion the worst fight of the day that's not the boss this four crow fight the screen is very big and the crows are very erratic yeah just like you saw like the farther your range 
goes, um, the worse the attack becomes, right? Like, the, the further they're away from you, the less you hit. Mm -hmm. um, and as you saw there, I only popped, what, got an eight damage? Yeah. You see the dome that pops up when you go to select things to attack. If they're outside that dome, you're either going to hit for really low damage or miss. If they're in the dome, you're good. Dome good. Outside the dome bad. But not too bad. Uh, you got your damage rolls. You got some one shots mm -hmm. in on some of those crows. So pretty good. I like to call this upcoming enemy the Coca-Cola bear. Um, you know how the Coca-Cola commercials have the little bears or whatever. Well, this is Parasite Eve's version of it. Um, <laughs> it can be a dangerous one because you mix it in with these snakes that can easily, you know, hit you and then poison you. And then Big Boy can take some damage when he hits you. So it's just a bad time altogether. But it looks like we're we're looking good, actually. A wacky polar bear that shoots lightning that forks in random yes, directions. Yes. <laughs> Not too bad. Again, but, the biggest threat is really just getting poisoned. So as long as mm -hmm. you can avoid that, you're usually in good shape. And this is why you want to go ahead and make sure you take those snakes out ASAP. Here we go. Double monkey fight. This fight could be a little uncomfortable, too. Uh, if they throw they their banana arm, I don't I don't. They can, they can kind of whip that at you. That thing could do a lot of damage. Unfortunate damage rules for you. A crit and a regular shot will kill the monkeys. Chris didn't get any on the second monkey. But they didn't want to throw their banana arm things, so... Good on ya. Good. Yeah. Make a quick little detour at this chest. It could be either that defense he got, or it could be a tool. I th think still it's like an 80 20 percent the tool is the 20 percent in that chest um kind of changes things up a little bit it's inconsequential either way like it doesn't mm. change much just so you could do a menu earlier here we go pile of leaves battle <laughs> they're very creative with their enemies they're just like, what? what's a normal thing that you would find in a park? Let's have her fight it. I'm surprised the park bench doesn't come to get you. Uh, maybe new game plus. <laughs> <laughs> Second round, the bench starts to come off. <laughs> All right, well, that was really the last regular fight that we're going to have to deal with in the park. But you saw Chris right there. He actually unloaded all of the bullets in his gun. Uh, taking the bullet down to zero or filling it up completely has the same effect. You'll, if you put it to zero, you'll start the next fight with a full clip of ammo. So it's kind of just like a gauge of how much ammo you have. But here we go, Worm Boss. This boss is a pretty big gatekeeper for every runner. Um, these four worms, they split, and as you kill them, they kind of, they, they'll get bigger and they actually get, I think, 25 more health back per dead worm. So we kind of kill them a little methodically. We'll start with the farthest one because it kind of, they'll retain their shape. Chris is attacking another one. He's there's a there's a few different strats here, but really the best strat is don't die. So you see him kind of peppering them, which is one way to go about it. Uh, we we have a good idea of like if if they throw the ball attack, where we can stand to avoid their the burst of the balls. Did not get hit by the spiky things. And Chris doing pretty well right now. Hopefully I didn't just jinx him. But really, you just kind of want to work on the, the ones so they kind of keep up where they're at. When there's the final two, they will stay. Uh, I don't know if I've ever seen it stay where it's at like that before, but. Yeah, I don't, I don't like that. Very weird. But one down, uh, when you get there, you get to the big worm. Really, you just want to make sure you dodge its attack if you just move diagonally to what? the... What? <laughs> what? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> uh -oh. 
Yeah, uh, we're that's gonna probably a good call. It's a pretty interesting hitbox there for Parasite Eve. Thank you very much, game. Whoa, and he's trying to just smack you straight up. What a world. <laughs> but we're through. I don't like this at all. <laughs> Our fight's really just a lot of juggling of things happening around you. Not many thing, not many fights will be so spread apart and coming at you from different angles. So really just want to trust your instincts, move to the spots you know you need to move and kind of just pepper in a, as much damage as you can. Chris did a pretty so, good job there. He didn't die, did. so in my book, that's great. <laughs> Living right. past the fight is the best. <laughs> I think... So So with Eve 3, we're going to have... Yes, yeah, so so worms. We, we, thank goodness we passed worms. But <laughs> now we go to Eve three, and she's not really that hard, but she hits like a tank. Again, she can crit anywhere from sixty to like seventy five. And if we looked at my menu, I had no medicine, and I had low PE, which is like my magic. So. We're gonna probably stay away from her. Normally, you want to go ahead and bait her attacks, like her physical attacks. Um, but I may just take my time. And oh, I lied. No, okay, we're good. <laughs> I know. You're like, I'm gonna take my time. <laughs> Runs directly into her. <laughs> Sorry. I was just like, Chris, I don't know if you know what taking memory. your time means. <laughs> But yeah, so she could do one of two things. She could either melee your face off or she could fly up into the air and do this very predictable, easy to dodge attack. Um, the melees are faster, uh, but they're also scarier. They could hit for 20 damage like you saw there, or they could hit for like 90. So it's very scary. But Chris is done. Easy, easy peasy. As long as, as, long as she flies up like a couple times, you're pretty safe. And he's still hanging on to the revive. But not too bad, not too bad at all. Yeah, that wasn't that wasn't bad. It, it kind of got a bit worried, worrying some when uh, she got that second melee attack off. I think the first one somehow took less damage because maybe I was moving away when she tried to attack, so I kind of got out of like a crit zone or whatever. But <sighs> that 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 second hit was like 40, but is what it is. Yeah, you were you were pretty good. You were gonna end the fight the next couple shots anyway. Not too bad. So they, they too, like I said, Worms and Eve, they're kind of like a little gatekeeper of the run, so we're doing all right. But uh, before day two actually gets to end, we have to sit through about another few minutes of cutscenes. Get a little more flashbackery of this, like, hospital scene where the kids on the table look suspiciously like the kid who was running through the sewer. <laughs> <laughs> And then Daniel, I guess, hears the commotion and whatnot. Remember, it's December, New York, winter, <laughs> and my, my boy's wearing shorts. Homie's wearing shorts, man. Everybody oh. knows that person who wore shorts at the bus stop in the winter. <laughs> Everybody knows that person. Yep. Ben or, is that person. Or you are that person. Yeah, or you either know the person or you are the person. <laughs> There's no other two types of people in the world. You're either a shorts in the winter person or you're not. And Ben is. But luckily, so, you know, Daniel was worried that Lorraine and Ben were in there. For some reason, at the convenient time, Ben decided that he was going to leave the entire park. <laughs> leave Central Park on his own and uh, managed to escape being turned into mitochondrial goo. Uh, the same could not be said for Lorraine, which is Daniel's ex-wife. Uh, she is now in the goo. Too bad, so sad for Lorraine. He has become part of the Jello. <laughs> the greater good. <laughs> the greater good. <laughs> <laughs> But now stuff's really popping off. Like everybody, like at least everybody at the station is now on board with the wackiness that's going on. So they um, order like a full scale evacuation of New York City. And meanwhile, uh, Daniel's like, hey, I'm going to leave my child with you guys. Can you watch him for a while? 
They're like, sure, we'll take him into the, you know, the canine pen so he could play with this dog, Shiva. Ugh. I'm sure nothing will ever happen to Shiva. Nothing bad. Nothing will ever happen to Shiva. You know, having a good time. You love to see it. Kids and dogs, it's a good dynamic. But here we go. Here's the here's the mass ex, uh, exodus of New York City. This guy has Jedi mind powers. Stops the taxi <laughs> with his bare hands going full speed. <laughs> and just like that, where it's desolate. New York City, where there is no traffic and ever, and cops have Jedi mind tricks. <laughs> I miss the 90s. <laughs> oh, man. Just so you know how desolate it is, there is a single ice skate left. One <laughs> single ice skate. Here's our introduction to another main character. This is Maeda. Um, trying to get into the city because he's, he's here to help. He's, he came all the way from Japan to try and prevent what happened in Japan from happening here. Uh, the cops are giving him kind of a fit about coming in, but... You know, the one, the one decided to uh, catch on fire. <laughs> Maeda uses it as an opportunity to sneak past them. Some more flashbacks. This hospital is a, a big deal. I wonder if we'll go to it eventually. This is the second time that we are seeing the flashback of this hospital. <laughs> It's like literally the same exact scenes. <laughs> All right. Here we are, though. This is this is by far my favorite scene in the entire game. This scene is a complete mess of what's <laughs> happening. Right? Like, what is going on in this? Why is there a trash fire? The the people evacuated like mere hours ago. I don't think they'd be in and, and my aunt is watching TV. So why 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 is it the heat just working? Why do they need a trash <laughs> fire in the room? Also look how big that vent is above the bed. The biggest vent I've ever seen. This place is overall a dump. Like these people were like, "Oh, we got to get out of here, but let's destroy the place first." <laughs> Square footage is 568 feet. <laughs> yeah. Th yeah, this is supposed to be in Soho. I mean, I've been in apartments in Hoboken and it does look pretty similar, I won't lie. <laughs> I have no comment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I think uh, Maeda found Aya here, brought her to this abandoned apartment. They're uh, squatting, a little, doing a little bit of squatting. Aya's trying to get some rest. And then they're just kind of explaining what happened. Maeda's trying to talk about why he's here and whatnot. And um, at the end of it, they're just like, you know, why don't we leave Aya alone? Let her get some rest. To sleep in this random apartment that nobody knows who owns it. And my aide is like, fine, I'll leave her alone. I'll just go sleep outside on the sidewalk. Daniel, being the good friend he is, checking up one You're more time. How are you? And it takes him a good old 30 seconds to walk out of here and get to the end of day two. So remember when we said we had a few minutes? This is finally the end of day two. And if you are, if you are in close, or at least close to PB Pace, this part is very brutal because you're just waiting for Daniel to walk out of the room so that day three can happen and you can go ahead and get your split but he takes forever to leave the room. So every step just kind of hurts your soul when it comes yeah, to the, you know, PB I, part. You know, I, all I want is just faster movement speed. <laughs> I don't need a remake. I don't need a remaster. I don't need anything. I just want them to move faster. 
It's like that special remote from Chrono Cross. You know, when you beat the game the second time, play through, you have that special remote that you can go fast forward or, you know, rewind or whatever. That's <laughs> yeah. what we need. New game plus. See, there's Maeda sleeping on the sidewalk. Why he couldn't just, you know, stay on the couch, I'll never know. Or go with wherever Daniel went. <laughs> Or Maya's even like, can sleep I... in the cop car. Yeah, my head is like, can I go with you, Daniel? He's like, no, you're not coming to my house. Like, <laughs> like what happened? Again, it's New York in the winter. <laughs> I'll just sleep on the sidewalk. <laughs> okay, sure. But now we're in Soho. We got to make a couple stops here. Chris is going to go to the gun shop first. It's locked, but Daniel has a solution. He's James McAvoy and bends a bullet around Aya. <laughs> I really enjoy that part. He's oh, like, Aya, get out of the way. That. And then she takes two steps directly towards the middle of the door. I'm like, Am I? <laughs> That's not out of the way, Aya. Learn your directions. But, you know, all is not not too bad because now we get to go in and loot the gun shop. We get our next gun and a couple accoutrement that we'll get be using to upgrade to it. Yeah don't, yeah, don't try to bend bullets around your friends to break into the gun shop. Here we go. Next menu. Our, our new gun we're going to be using is the M11, which is our first submachine gun of the run. He's going to take the M16 that we were using, menu the stats into that, and then he is going to take the pistol from the first day and also menu the stats into that and like you said we did not use that gun to get the times two shot so we're still working with the times five of the of the uh submachine gun so i do have one extra gun um but we will go ahead and be able to get that during later on during the the day yeah and that's, we'll get, and that's we'll normal get another for tool. this part yeah yep there's another tool here and another revive in this pharmacy, but if we really want to play it safe, we can get them. But I have an I have a revive already. Um, I'm feeling good. We should we should be good to go. I'm about it. Here we go. Hardest boss of day three. Oh, we did it. Getting into that cop car is yeah. the worst. <laughs> if you're like a step too far to the left or right, you cannot get into the car. You can talk to the back seat of the car for some reason, and Daniel's like, you don't sit in the back seat, Aya, so you can't get in that way either. And if you happen to go into the back seat of the car and you just want to move left towards the front seat, you'll walk under the door trigger. This door is a mess, and Chris did it like a pro. Plenty of practice. <laughs> now we're back at the museum. They just are trying to get to somewhere where they know there's a lab. So they're like, oh, we were just there. We're going to go back to Clamp's lab <sighs> um, to do some mitochondria stuff. That's my uh, best explanation of mitochondria stuff. So there's two things in this game that seem to be the theme. One is mitochondria. The other involves a bank. We won't explain what bank it is, <laughs> but this room will explain both of them <laughs> on two different days. And that's all I will say about that. Right now they're testing out, like, Maeda is going to test out two blood samples. He's going to look at Aya's blood, and he's going to do his own blood. And they get a nice little FMV break, the first one. I think Aya's yeah, no, blood is first. Oh. No, this is, uh, this is, this is Oh, it's or, Eve's? No, it, it's whoever's blood, I guess, that gets infected. I'm All right, no, sure. it's his own blood. It's his own blood. I'm being stupid. Did, did he take a shot of his? Yeah, he did that before coming over. Or maybe it is Eve's. I don't remember. It's somebody either who can be infected or is Eve. It's the bad blood. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you know how much we pay attention to the story. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, RJ probably pays way more attention to the story than I do uh, because... <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll 
pass on that but <laughs> <laughs> so the first blood sample you can see like the things attaching to the cells uh that's just like an example of how like what is happening at the cellular level of people who are getting infected kind of thing and then it's kind of like uh everybody who's been exposed is kind of at that level so whenever they're around eve basically she could do anything with her mitochondria powers that she would be able to do to everybody but Aya. And then next they'll do like a blood sample they're going to take from Aya right now. Look at the refresh rate on that PC. Beautiful. I think will I think it's going crazy. Screen never changes. It's always just the same little DNA helix <laughs> and the refresh rates through the roof. She didn't realize that Dr. Clamp is a gamer <laughs> and that his top tier PC gaming uh, monitor. Right there. He's an apex predator. Apex predator <laughs> playing Minesweeper. <laughs> <laughs> So here's the Aya blood rejecting the little grabby things. So that's their uh, visual depiction <laughs> of Aya not being able to be affected by Eve's powers. Now they're just kind of doing a whole bunch of speculation and look who's back. It's Clomp. Everybody's supposed to be evacuated, but he's still here. And they kind of press him about that. And I think, I think really what he just says is he's like, I have research to finish. Like that's a good excuse for not evacuating. <laughs> Okay, buddy. Like, why didn't you evacuate? He's like, why are you in my lab? <laughs> it's like, bro. Did you not see the goo ball, man? <laughs> no, he's It's not. coming down 35th Street right now. He's not evil at all. Meanwhile, Daniel is still snooping around the office. And then out of nowhere, Daniel realizes what's actually on the computer screen. Not only is it a DNA helix, but it's also like a, it's names of Aya and Daniel and like all their family members and stuff like that. So Daniel's like, why do you have this information? And Clamp's like, just turns off the computer. He's like, I don't know what you're talking about. <sighs> Meanwhile, Daniel's furious. And Clamp's like, you better leave. And they're just like, okay, man, we will. No more questions. And then we get to play again. <laughs> We're finally at day three to play. <laughs> but <clears throat> this is where the game itself, gameplay wise, picks up. Because I don't think you, you, you have this and then the end of the. Or the beginning of day four is not much dialogue. And then Knocked from there, it's just straight out, straight out game. Yeah, there's not really a much in the way of long cut scenes like this for yes, quite a while no. now, at least. But uh, they get word on the way while they're driving on the way back that the police station's under attack uh, by Eve. So now they're back here, and you can see the 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 main oh, off or uh, main entrance here has been ransacked a little bit. So they're gonna go and. Uh, Kind of investigate or see what's going on. Try to help out. Then we get to play Aya again. Tells, Aya tells Daniel to stay. Daniel's like, my son's in here. Screw you. Gives her the Baker treatment. We say Baker <laughs> treatment because he said he said the same exact thing to Baker at the end of day two. And just ran off. 
when Maeda gives you a very important charm there before you're allowed to actually leave. Here we go. We get to see the new gun in action for the first time. And it's different than the first two guns that we use. This is an SMG, which has some interesting properties. Uh, one of the properties of it is that it has the chance to fire 1.5 bullets. So it has a chance to fire an extra 50% of, or not, I, I don't know if it's 50% bullets, but it has a chance to fire extra bullets. It's RNG at the expense of not a being able to pick the targets you're shooting at. So when the times five gun shoots, it actually has a chance to shoot seven bullets. We'll see. That was actually pretty good. So one thing about the random targeting is, is if you pick, if you try to shoot an enemy with a certain amount of bullets and you kill it before you hit to that bullet, it won't distribute to other enemies. It'll just stop the turn. So the random targeting RNG actually comes to play, comes into play quite often. Uh, with one, what it's targeting, and two, whether or not it, um, the distribution of attacks is good. If we go there, the very important charm that I was just talking about, Chris put it in the bank because it's completely useless. Oh, we don't uh, have to, yeah. My Sorry, Ada's I had brain for that's okay. Maeda is going to give us a, a handful of charms that are actually just not useful for any reason in particular at all. And then we get to see the first instance of refights here. Unlucky for Chris is every time you go through an area that already had a fight in it, you have a 45% chance of getting a refight, which is getting a fight on the same trigger. Um, Chris ran into the first instance. I think there's like 16 instances where you can get refights throughout this game. Uh, so it, some of it is useful because by the end of towards the later parts of the run, we do want to be at a certain amount of XP, yada, yada, yada for now. We'll get into it way later. But for now, really, all it is is time loss because these these first couple opportunities for refights are kind of inc inconsequential to the grand mm -hmm. scheme of the EXP you can get. So really, we just don't want to see them. But I'm lucky we already ran into one. Banger alert. Yeah, also banger alert. This fight's a little interesting because it makes you think there's only a singular rat and then like a crow comes flying out of there. So you want to take your time and wait for the crow to come in before you start shooting because like I said, SMGs, random targeting. If it decides to shoot the bird that's way off screen, you're just going to miss a whole bunch of bullets. And ammo isn't particularly tight in general, but with the 5X route, it does... It does come into play. Like if you start missing a whole bunch of shots and you don't get really good ammo drops, you could be in for a bad time. You definitely want to make sure when you're shooting that you're in a position to hit everything on the screen as best as possible. Sometimes it's unavoidable, but for the most part, you can make sure you're standing in a good spot. We get to see a little cutscenes of Ben chasing Shiva. Shiva is trying to get away from Ben because Shiva being the legend that she is realizes that Ben's in danger the longer he's around her, but Ben being a child is like, I'm gonna follow the dog, where are you going? Ignoring all the monsters around him. So Chris made a small detour here for this chest in here. That's a new piece of armor, and it's actually the piece of armor that we will wear for the rest of the run. It's a CM Vest 2, I think it's called. What the CM vests do, they have a property called auto heal, which if your health drops below a certain threshold, um, it'll pop your highest medicine in your inventory, which is pretty good because it means you don't have to waste a turn healing. But there are some things about it that are unfortunate. Like, so if you were to take mortal damage and just hop right over that threshold, you'll just die. It doesn't it doesn't auto heal you just because you go below it. You can still die with it. So it's something that still needs to be monitored, but it does enable us to take more turns attacking and whatnot. And as as runners, we're more familiar with enemies that have a chance to hit over that threshold. This fight is pretty terrible, but it's starting off okay. 
these spiders have a chance to shoot those. They always start off the turn shooting those webs on the ground. And if you stu if you stand on the webs, you get slowed, which works like basically any RPG with an active time bar. It'll slow your active time bar down. And But with the added effect, since you get to move around in these fights, Aya will move around all slow too. So it's not good. You really want to avoid them. And Chris did a, a good job baiting out the attack and moving it. So we're about, we are running into our second Pokemon evolution. <laughs> um, I don't know. I can't remember what Pokemon is a dog. I'm sure there's plenty of them. Houndoom. But, uh, Shiva, Shiva, really. Shiva is definitely going to turn into Houndoom. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. This is, enjoy. this is just the mega form. <laughs> EX. <laughs> Like, this is what I was saying earlier about the FMV cutscene. This is, this holds up really well. Like, this is grotesque and it's creepy and strange. Like, it's just cool. There's a lot of things about this game that are just cool. Can you imagine playing this when you were younger and you're like, all right, I don't want a dog anymore. Oh, I did. And I was, <laughs> not, this I was not a happy camper when I got to parts like this. I was like, what am I doing with my life? <laughs> my mom's like, I told you it would be scary. And I'm like, stop it, mom. <laughs> You don't know me. I'm nine years old. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, so nice. here's the tool that we wanted to get earlier. I'm 11, we'll stick with this. I'm gonna take my sweet time doing these because again, menuing is, uh, menuing is pretty crucial in this game. And if you mess up, you know, especially with the gun, like replacing the tool, it can really, really hurt a run. Here we go, we got another spider in the fight, so Chris is gonna do some movement to manipulate that web attack. Nicely done. And uh, now we're gonna be on to the boss of the day, which if you haven't guessed, it's gonna be Shiva. Which, uh, in the game, the uh, Shiva hat, once it's in mutated form, it actually does have a name. It's called Kerberos. It's spelled, it's spelled like Cerberus, but with a K. It's very creative. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we usually just call her Shiva. And uh, Shiva's kind of a crapshoot, honestly. Yeah. We'll just see how, how it goes. Uh, Shiva she has a... Heal. Yeah, she has a couple of things. Yep, I'll go ahead and uh, I'll fight. You can... Okay. So Shiva has one move, that move, which will uh, half your health, which immediately puts you into scary land because Shiva can crit you with her melee attack for about 90 damage. It also has the laser beam attack, which we just saw that could also crit for like in the 70s. And uh, Shiva can heal, which we just saw. Oh, thank you. Oh boy, yeah, we got a little lucky there. So <laughs> there we see the CM vest at work. Chris was at about 50-ish health. Uh, he got hit for 35, barely survived. Hey, but a head's, a head's dead already, regardless of the healing. So we're in good shape. This this may seem like it's kind of spiraling, but maybe it is. Hey, look, an empty turn. Maybe it is a little bit. And that's kind of just how Shiva goes. There is no way to control exactly what happens with Shiva. And fortunately for Chris, that was actually a really good fight, this, uh, like, in spite of all uh, the two healing turns. It must have just been on the same head. I'll take it. But yeah, it went really well. You also had a, you had a decent amount of crits too. So one thing yeah. with the 5X route and just an SMG in general is um, the way like having extra bullets work is as you get farther into the clip, there's like sort of a drop off in damage, but those extra bonus bullets that could be fired, they aren't affected by that penalty. So getting crits with those extra bonus bullets is pretty nice because you get full damage. And Chris was actually hitting a bunch of crits, which helped that fight go pretty smoothly, in my opinion. It always looks like a mess. And it kind of just is, because Shiva, literally, you have 180 health at this point. Shiva can half your health, bring you right down to 90, 91, 92, something like that, and then melee you for 90 damage and kill you. You can die in two turns. So having the revive is pretty crucial. A lot of runs will die here. Everybody, so I think clap. Right here we Everybody clap to... for Chris. <laughs> <laughs> We're not done yet. I think uh, Ek, uh, we wanted to go ahead and uh, have a little break here, correct?
Oh, I don't care. I'm good. <laughs> Day four is about another 26 minutes. Or probably like 30 minutes. Yeah, day five is definitely the longest. Day four is, I, I wouldn't say long, as long. I think the second longest would probably be day two. I just realized my OBS um, is muted. So yes, uh, really quick, we will be uh, taking a quick break. This will allow people to, you know, stand up, touch your toes, stretch your legs. Uh, we're just talking about what they would be good. Um, so right now, uh, since we hit the end of day three, that's about roughly the halfway point in the game, I would say. A little under. <laughs> But yeah, uh, this would be a good time to let people enjoy the run if you do need to get a snack, get water, uh, touch your toes and all that. So we'll be taking a quick wellness break. Uh, before we do go to that, I just want to say that if you're watching this over on YouTube, feel free to join us over at twitch.tv slash quick to check out our live shows starting most nights at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we're going to be back with more Parasite Eve in one moment. But we're just going to go to a quick wellness break. So be right back. All right, we are back from the break. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, we were able to dive right back on into the spooky holiday horrors. So, Chris, whenever you're ready, feel free to count down and we can resume the timer. All right, timer's going to start in three, two, one. On right, to so day four. Oh. Yep, go ahead. <laughs> no, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say all the yep, just like RJ said, all the day four. We're they're trying to uh go ahead and get together to figure out a game plan on A, what the heck happened, and B, what is Eve's next steps. And um yeah, so now this we're gonna have to go ahead and find Maeda and see where we go from here. We get to do a nice little jog through the police station. Not that we just did it or anything, but we're going to do right. it again. This time a lot less hostile. And you'll notice there so. that you could actually go up the stairs before you can, without even being able to see Aya on the screen. Funny little, funny little thing. We're almost there, third floor into this lab. If you go into this lab on day three while you're doing it, the uh, nurse, there's actually a nurse in here. He'll give you a full heal. But anyway, we don't this is where Midas. We do heals during a run. Yeah, who, who, who heals during speed <laughs> who, who heals? Who heals when you have 10 HP and they can crit for 70? <laughs> oh, man. The one good thing about these runs, and you'll see some at some point, especially when you start to get towards PB range and top top 10 runners, you'll start to realize that some of the HP values, some people don't care. They're going to ride it out. And even I've seen I've seen bosses go to where they're about to die, but you're about to die with one HP. So you're you're stuck on one hit KO mode. And it's just like, all right, well, we're we're either gonna heal or we're gonna try to pop these bullets and hope the boss dies before I get hit. And uh, it makes uh, it makes for some very interesting runs. <laughs> if you if you want to run this game and then eventually get to somewhat of a high level, just uh, like resets, like resetting, <laughs> or not have an issue with resetting. Lo like resetting and love the opera. Lots of opera. <laughs> yeah, you will you will acquire a taste for opera yes. like no other. You will enjoy the El Fuego that is the opera. So you remember the flashbacks that we were having about a hospital and hospital rooms and well, here we go. It's day four, and we are finally... I would this, say in the flesh, but the building is not a flesh. This, this, this place looks though. really this familiar, is. Chris. <laughs> I don't I've know why. <laughs> I've never seen this before. <laughs> well, anyways, here's the hospital. This place is kind of a mess. It, it, the screens 
like the the way you move on the screens like the directional pad for moving kind of like rotates around very strangely from screen to screen so probably in my like the biggest challenge of this place when speed running is being familiar with what screens you're running onto and how they're going to flip the d-pad on how to move on it like there's mm -hmm. two different hallways for these elevators we're on the first one we'll see when you get to the next one the directional buttons don't work the same way that's just parasite e for you so up can be left yeah no down can be right and then down <laughs> you know left can be up it, it, it it's a mess sometimes so but the more you run it the more you end up getting used to the way what screens are what and it, it does become muscle memory at that point so we, we were trying to go take the elevator to go up to see eve and uh Eve is already aware that we're here and she kind of manipulated the elevator to send us all the way to the bottom instead. So now we're in, and then she kind of shorts out the circuits to use the elevator. And unlucky for us, the stairs are already destroyed so we can't just take them before somebody suggests just taking the stairs. So now we're gonna go on a little bit of a fetch questy nonsense to get fuses to fix, I don't know. We're gonna ride the elevator eventually though. <laughs> Here's the first fuse. Also, a big thing in this day, like Chris was saying earlier, um, managing your inventory is super important here because the game doesn't do an amazing job of telling you you don't pick up something when you try. It kind of just glosses over with really quick, like really quick text, especially if you're mashing. So it's important to keep track of the things you're picking up here and uh, if you pick up the key items we need. You, you don't realize how fast your inventory is full flashes before you when it is full and you're mashing, you know. And a lot, a lot of the fights in this place, they could either give you, uh, the, the enemies have a couple different drops. They can either give you medicines, they can give you curative items, which we haven't even touched on curative items like curing poison, curing other status effects. They're completely useless to the run. I, not, not completely. There's one that's sort of useful, but for the most part, like curing poison, curing paralysis, it's all not necessary and more inventory clutter. So you, the more you see throughout this run, the more you're gonna wanna ditch them at like points, mainly designated points where we're gonna go into the menu to do other things. We'll just trash all the nonsense that we don't need. Here we go, first enemies. We got a little amoebus blob and some flies. Of the flies that shoot the goo, um, they, if you were to step on the goo, it works like the spider web, you'll get uh, slowed. Uh, the little amoeba people shoot their red balls at you and uh, they can poison you. But at this point, since we have the CM vest with the auto heal, poison isn't much of a, a factor anymore of, you're never gonna die to poison cause it's never gonna like, it doesn't crit. It's only gonna do a certain fixed amount. And it's like a single digit at this point. I tell so you if you what, it, it'll always put you below the threshold. I kind of want the oh, here's a good opportunity of you know your inventory's full. Your inventory's um, full already. <laughs> That's yeah. crazy. Oh, I want to save that. Just, you could I, you could just use it now because you're gonna menu it into the next gun anyway. You could get rid of your cure M that you have. Right, yeah. I mean, if you want to hold it, you can. You could get rid of the cure M no, that you that's have. I'm gonna get rid of some meds too, cause. Well, was what I was going to say before I was rudely interrupted by this, you know, your your inventory's full statement. Timing um, is impeccable. <laughs> timing is very impeccable. Um, I forgot what I was gonna say now. Sweet. That's all right. We'll uh, I'll, I'll just make some stuff up and then we can revisit that <laughs> when you're there not fighting go. something. So here we go. We got more amoebas and uh, we got a dog man. Those those things that are there are actually called dog men. Are you back, Chris? Nope. <laughs> all right. Well, let's keep making stuff up. So he's going to pick up a key card from that burning corpse. He got the second fuse and a key card in this room. Both important. So you need to make sure when you actually go to pick them up that it doesn't give you your inventory is full. Uh, we we okay. already. I, I'm surprised your inventory was so full. Already. You were stacked on medicine. It's back. So I hope I get this this same RNG. Oh yeah. When it, when it when it comes to offense, you know, plus twos. 
on an actual run because I have been getting plus twos like a champ. The beginning, you got plus twos on both of the chests. The chest that I just picked up was a plus two. Like if this is a plus two that we end up getting behind here, that's gonna be crazy. But quick, we gotta talk about the next chest. This next chest he's gonna go, we're gonna get our next gun for the rest of the run until the end of day five-ish. Uh, we can either get an M10 or a Micro Uzi. The Micro Uzi is vastly superior. Uh, the M10 is not as bad as it used to be with the new route. Micro Uzi, let's go, Chris. Manifest the good luck. Just, so that's fun. Just talk. Let it, let it all happen. Well, yeah, just keep talking about it. So Micro Uzi, good stuff. Um, Chris is going to do another, probably like one of the biggest menus of the game, just to set up the next gun. Uh, we're gonna trash the- we're gonna move away from the multi-shot. We're gonna move into a two-shot, uh, two-shot burst for the SMGs now, uh, for more control over the gun. And cause the enemies get a little scarier, so being stagnant with multiple shots, like the 5X, it gets a little more dicey going forward. Uh, but the micro is you'll be important after this day, but just for now, just- just, you know, do a little, do a silent little woo to yourself. Like, yeehaw, we got the micro Uzi. If it was the M10, you could have just been like, all right, yeah, that's a gun. But uh, now we got the, we got the, the dream. I, I call the two guns, the meme and the dream. And we're, we're living the dream right now. <laughs> so beautiful. It brings a tear to my eye. I, it is good, because now we all get to experience the wonderful joy of frost bullets later, but yeah, we'll, we'll get there. Well, we got, we got some stuff to do. Uh, Chris picked up the the last fuse in that room, so now he's putting them into this fuse box. Kind of like a little... It, it's interesting, because you can't just be like, yeah, put all the fuses in. You have to put each fuse in individually. Then you have to reconnect the wire. Then you have to turn the power on. If you turn the power on first and then connect the wires, I gets uh, shocked. Oh. <laughs> there goes the uh, good example of your D-pad changing on you. Yeah, it just kind of it completely flips for the downstairs lobby here. It's so strange. But now we got a working elevator. We're gonna head back up to the lobby. Here we go. So now these there's next two couple kids. of fights, these next couple of fights are actual, like, we're going to run into them no matter what. But on the way back, hopefully we don't get any refights, what RJ was explaining uh, earlier. Yeah. So everything, yeah, everything he's about to go through four screens. Um, where is it? Three screens. Three screens. Um to a dead end, basically, for story purposes, and then he's gonna come back, and as I was saying earlier, every time you go through a screen one time with a fight, and you get that fight, the next time you pass through, you have a 45% chance of getting the fight again. Basically a coin flip. Uh, you don't want to see them. There's some benefits to it here, kind of, more so than in day three, but if you could get through it without any other refights, you're doing a happy dance. The odds of at least getting one fight or not getting any of the fights is pretty low. Like you should expect to get at least one of the refights, but we'll keep our fingers crossed. Chris has been, we haven't cursed him yet. He's been getting good drops. He got the good gun. He didn't get killed by Shiva. I, that's a lot of, a lot of luck. <laughs> so we're going to keep it rolling. Keep the good vibes going. Hmm? But you can see now he's already kind of hitting like a truck. He's, he's, he's really doing some big damage with crits on these enemies. Crap, that's what I should have named Aya. I should have named her Mac. Mac. She's the Mac, Mac truck. truck. <laughs> oh, such a dad. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Wait, that, yeah, that's three. No more for you, sir. <laughs> you, you are tapped I, out. I'm tapped out of my dad jokes. Yeah, you've hit the quota for the stream. <laughs> Well, one kind of interesting thing, it's just like uh, second nature to Chris running the game at this point is like he, when there's the flies are on the screen, he tries to position himself where he is always in between the flies with another enemy. Because if the flies can't get right up against you, they won't actually attack ever. 
So it kind of gives you an opportunity to clear something else out, maybe even kill the fly first if you're lucky with your targeting, where you don't really get forced into dodging slow puddles. So good movement, good movement from Chris there. Good uh, knowledge to yeah, the manipulate thing, the enemies to his advantage. The good thing that you, you want to, or the thing that you want to keep in mind in this day is that you never want to get hit by those green attacks or the attacks that are going to slow you down. Um, because that could lead into massive time loss. Um, especially if you're consistently getting hit by it. Yeah, it's pretty excruciatingly slow. It's not just even like mm -hmm. a tiny bit. It's like half speed. <laughs> it is painful. Here you go. The whole reason he came into here is because he rescued one nurse who told him there was another nurse in this room, and the nurse gives you a geek card, so now you're backtracking. We've skipped two fights so far. We got one more. Oh, all right. That's all right. That's, That's okay. Like I said, you're, you're really expecting to get one fight. Unfortunately, this is probably the worst one. Mm -hmm. And only for the only for the fact that there's four enemies and it's a pretty big room, so they could split apart from you. They're actually being pretty nice to Chris though, and just kind of moving together. So yeah, really not that bad at all. Plus, and it gave good, him six. It thing. gave them all ammo drops, which is nice. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, I know. Me and you both saw it. I was like, oh, ammo! Look at that. <laughs> Can't complain. Yeah, because those are the ammo. Ammo shouldn't be an issue now that we switch back to two. Um, yeah. So yeah, and, the, and these some of these monsters will go ahead and drop ammo, and there, there's a couple of ammo boxes we can pick up if we really want to, but I'm gonna use that time to clear my med. At this point of the run, you don't want any med ones anymore because at this point, you're gonna go ahead and start picking up twos and threes. Um, so if you do have any ones, you're gonna wanna go ahead and just use them up or just discard them if you're full health. Mm -hmm. We got the chonky amiibo boy. This amiibo actually oh. is kind of kind of a problem. That, that jump attack can do a big a big amount of damage. Chris uh, coolly dodged the first attack though, so it was never in any real danger. I didn't happen to see. Did you get the vest or was it just ammo? No, it was ammo. Nice. So yeah, that amiibo has a, a chance to drop a vest, which is just more inventory clutter. We don't need it. We have our vest. We got it last last day, and we don't need anything else. So good, good, uh, good luck. Still continuing with the drops. Now we go up to the thirteenth floor. This elevator has three floors it could go to. It could go to the basement, the lobby, or the thirteenth floor. Don't even try to go to any of the other floors because it won't go there. The buttons are missing. <laughs> you won't be able to get there if you want to. The other ones are just and, for show. And there's no stairs. <laughs> All right, here we go. This fight's a little interesting. It's the first introduction to a mixed man, which is the uh, big, like, amalgamous shaped thing in the back of the room. The, the way the way we choose to deal with these guys is kind of up to the, like runner specific. So Chris is going to choose to energy shot, which will put the mixed man into one regular shot territory. We already saw it. It's, it keeps spawning these like brain balls on its, I'm going to say chest. <laughs> and uh, mm -hmm. it kind of just like does it continuously for like no rhyme or reason. And it can start launching them all of their room. So any opportunity you really can to get rid of the mix man first, that's what you're hoping for. Luckily only one got released, so nothing too bad. But we'll fight a couple more of them along the way. Grabbing a secret tool real quick, and then he's gonna hit this button to unlock the door. Why they have a door, like a functioning door that's not hidden, hidden behind a shelf button, I don't know, but Chris is too wise for them. Saw it's right wise. through them. I'm a chungus boy, and I like to look behind stoves. <laughs> Pretty sure that was a stove. <laughs> <laughs> More Ooh. mixed men. The, the annoying so, thing about the balls is they keep coming and they don't end the fights when they die. Uh, the the <laughs> one good thing that just happened, if any of you paid attention, is that we ended up getting an iframe. Um, he ended up using his slow... Let me just go here. He ended up using his slow move, but 
we ended up avoiding it because somehow we got an iframe. And um, I don't know if you want to explain that more, RJ, if you know more details on how that is triggered or... Uh, sometimes it can be triggered by the contact damage. Like if you get hit with contact damage, like right at the exact same time, you would get hit by something else. You could get the, the bigger iframes. Sometimes you could get doubled up on damage with the contact damage. So mm -hmm. double-edged sword. But I don't know. Sometimes there's some weird happenings with the mixed men and that slow attack where like if you're shooting them, at the same time, it was almost like reverse iframes. So you shoot it right as he's doing the slow attack. And for some reason, it just doesn't do the effect on you. I, I don't, other than that, I'm not sure why. But not too bad. I mean, they, they, they did mixed man things. They released those stupid bouncing balls around the room. Even mm -hmm. before they're released and just sitting on the mixed man, you can still target them. It's not, and, and, and for whatever reason. So it's kind of, and with your random targeting of the SMGs, you don't have any control over it. So you're just really at the mercy of RNG to do, do what's right. But not too bad. Chris, um, do we, that, that last room is basically it before the boss. Um, the whole reason we're here is that, uh, Maeda explains that what Eve is probably trying to do is to look for some way to birth the ultimate being. So she came to the hospital in search of things that would help her do that. Uh, we just realized that we might be too late to stop her from getting the things we need. But she made a withdrawal chase. from the bank. Yeah, she went to the bank, made a withdrawal, and now we're gonna go chase her up to the ceiling and maybe hopefully stop her before she gets away. Oh, look at that, an empty vial. <laughs> too late. <laughs> yeah, it looks like we might be too late. Something tells me that we might be too late. Anyway, here we go. We go out onto the, the roof and it actually goes straight into a boss fight. This is Spider Woman. And this fight is pretty, not super difficult at all, unless Spider Woman does exactly what she just did there. Uh, Spider Woman stay will- still. Yeah, don't move. <laughs> all right. They'll go away in a sec. There you go. Yeah, so Spider Woman, it, she could, you were looking for two things, or like one thing right off the bat when the fight starts. So Spider Woman moves backwards like she did there. She will, you'll be far enough away where she's gonna do this web attack. Um, if you touch the webs, not only are you slowed, but you actually get stuck in place for a while. These webs are super webs. Yeah. But Chris uh, nicely didn't uh, move out of the way, just stood there and kind of took the time loss lumps in favor of not being oh. stuck there forever. Uh, but just like that, uh, you pump a lot of damage, go to phase two, pump some more damage, and it's over. Pretty easy fight. Yeah, Spider-Woman can take a lot of health. Um, you you want to go ahead and try to be in front of her and make sure, especially in the first phase, that she doesn't go all the way past those two big vents because while the boss can go past that, you can't and it's out of your range. So if she's around that area, it can be some huge, it, it can give you some huge time loss um, because you can't hit her. Or if you try, you're just wasting ammo and you gotta wait for the spider to come back to make sure you hit. So um, that's why you kind of want to get into the face of the boss and kind of block it. Um, but being so close to it, you know, you, you have that risk to where the, the boss can take higher damage, so. Yeah. I, it, I don't know. I feel I find it pretty unlucky to be killed by Spider-Woman. Yes, yeah. If you get killed by Spider-Woman, you're having a very bad day. And you're going to want to probably just either move on to something else on the stream <laughs> or just call it a night or day or whatever time you're running is. <laughs> the funny thing about this part is, like, she, uh, uh, Eve basically makes the pilots mitochondria goo and then the planes are going to crash into the building and if you actually don't escape to the right part of the building 
the planes crash and you game over you don't get to like retry it you're literally just dead and eve does like the classic action movie i'm gonna move away from the explosion without looking at it mm -hmm. we get one more fight for the day against this random spider usually a single turn gives you a cure m just dump it well, now we kind of just mash to the end of the day. Maeda and Daniel are waiting for you at the bottom. When we get there eventually. <laughs> she takes her sweet time climbing right. over everything. Everybody just takes their time. Nobody's in a rush for anything in this game. Except for Daniel. Daniel is flying high speed. <laughs> but only on the when he's driving. <laughs> <laughs> Put that man in a car and you will get anywhere you need to in record time. Yep. Daniel NASCAR driver. <laughs> but at least at this point in the game, it's okay because the city is supposed to be evacuated. Yes, so like yes. I, I, all right, I can I can I can suspend my uh, disbelief a little bit. <laughs> We're going to do a little reconvening in the police station here. Where they kind of, nah, just kind of making their next move. Uh, RJ, as they talk, like this is pretty much the end of day four, going on to our longest day of the game, which would be day five. Yeah. Um, you want to explain to them right now the different routes you normally take with those two guns. If you had the M10 or the route that we're going to take because we have the micro Uzi. Yeah, so if you get the M10, uh, you go directly to the next area that progresses the story. You go to Chinatown straight away because uh, they come to the goo. They saw like the goo moving around like they know when there's an entrance to the sewers in Chinatown that are close to where they need to be. Uh, but since we got the micro Uzi, we actually get to make a small detour uh, for a tool and another gun, because what's nice about the micro Uzi is it has extra tooling spots. So we take advantage of that by making a detour to the warehouse where we're going to grab kind of a secret tool. And, or Yeah, the tool is a secret, but we're going to grab a gun that's kind of in sight. And what we're going to do is take that, or we're going to take a skill from that gun called Quick Draw and put it onto our micro Uzi. This skill can't be put on the M10, which is one of the reasons why the M10 isn't as good. But Quick Draw is a pretty cool skill. What it does is it gives you an 80% chance to start the fights you get into with a full ATP bar, which is huge. So there's like, a, I don't know, 20 something fights coming up for like the rest of the game. Uh, generally at this point, the ATP bar takes about three-ish seconds to fill up. So, I mean, if you can get it in 80% of the fights, saving three seconds, I don't know, 80% of 20, I don't know if anybody wants to do some math. Yeah, I can't. What is about right 16, 16 fights, 16 times three? That's a lot of time. That's a lot of time to chunk off of a, a run. Uh, there's also another benefit of the micro Uzi that we'll find towards the end of this Chinatown sewer section that we're about to go in, but we'll touch on that a little later. So yeah, so we actually lose some time for the micro Uzi, even though it's the better gun, but ultimately you lose about 30 seconds getting the quick draw tool, but you should make it up and then some by having quick draw. Like right there it procced, and then we just demolished these yeah. enemies. So the good thing about the new route is even if you do have the M10, the M10 does do a lot of damage still. So things that, it, it, kind, of pl it kind of will mow through things almost similarly to the micro Uzi at this point. Uh, it's just like that quick draw, so unlucky there, didn't proc. Not the end of the world, because this fight starts you off away, uh, starts you off in a spot where you can't actually shoot enemies right away. You'll miss if you do. So it's not the end of the world for this fight in particular. But ultimately, it is more efficient to obviously start with a full ATB bar. There's almost no drawback to that. There you go, making a little detour for an offense up. And now we're gonna go into the sewers for arguably the worst forced fight in the game. <laughs> this, this fight coming up is, you have to take this fight. 
There's one that's coming up that could come up later. We hope we don't see that's arguably worse than the one we're about to do, but we're about to fight bats for the first time. And what sucks about bats is that they have the ability to blind you, which basically shrinks your your range to nothing. And you, you'll you miss like in their face. Uh, and, and what's bad about this is we have no way of dealing with it at this point in time. So the first fight with it, Chris is gonna do his absolute best to not get hit by it. It's not always the easiest thing. I'll probably but, get uh, hit. It, yeah, they probably will get hit. <laughs> mo mo most people get hit. There's people who have hundreds and hundreds of attempts at this game, and they are still going to get hit by these bats. It's it's unpredictable. You just got to do your best. Well, let's see how he does. Oh. Start off with a quick draw shot. Oh, he's almost dodged. So he has some options here. You can either let it wait out, or he could try and fire. You do You do have a chance to hit things that are in your face. Nice, actually pretty lucky there to kill a bat. Yep. Nice. Really not that bad. I mean, you probably would have ended not this fight like probably like two turns earlier, but really not that not bad. Not bad of how it could have been. Yeah, it was pretty good with the, the, like he hit a lot for how bad darkness really lowers your accuracy. Uh, so not too bad. But after you do clear bats for the first time, they give you the item you can to clear darkness. So, like, if he gets into bat fights on this screen, it could be bats or a frog. Frog is good. Unlucky for us. Frogs is the rare spawn, though, so you're almost always going to get bats on the screen. But if he does get blinded, he has a way of dealing with it now. A little unlucky with the damage rolls. All right, so this okay. next screen he's about to go on to is the, the death screen. He has a, it's a possible encounter. He hasn't come through it before, but it still has a possible chance. And we dodged it. All right, good. Exhale, Chris, exhale. All right, we got one more <laughs> is a possible encounter screen. One more, but this is this one's not nearly as bad. It's either two bats or a frog again, but it's still possible. We're good. He can just skip it. Sweet. Yeah, nice. Pretty good so damage source. rolls have been meh, but... um. But the refights, I think overall the refights in this uh, this run has not has been pretty good to me. Oh yeah, I think you've only had like two so or three maybe. Yeah, I think you're at two so far. Mm. And it's just good. So out of, I guess we're up to eight, eight potential mm. optional fights. You have two. That's pretty good. Got one more bat fight coming up here. We have plenty of cure Ds at this point, so it's not really a problem. Th this fight's kind of annoying because they don't give you any way to really deal with mm. killing the bat. Uh, Chris tried to get his quick draw shot off, which is, it's all right. Pretty much anybody would have tried to do the same thing he did. You, you, were, you were probably like a step away. It was just unlucky. Oh, yeah. But you know, we're done with bats, the worst enemies in the game. And we get a funny little cutscene. You remember that jello that was all conglomerated or whatever you want to call it or use fancy big words for? It's back. It's everywhere. <laughs> it's everywhere. It's alive. No, I'm just uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, what do I even do? All right. Do I shoot it? Do I point at it? Do I just look? And it's gone. But she does a scheme. She comes up with a scheme. So we're done with the sewer segment. Uh, we got a little bit of... I guess we're not quite done. We have some, like, things to do. There's no more fights in the sewer. We do, we all Plus, go into a subway section. Soon. During the second segment of the sewer, um, we actually picked up our last offensive one or two that we would pick up for the the route, the new route that we're uh, doing. Yep. So from here on out, the run pretty much functions the same way as it normally would, just yep. with massively more damage. Mm-hmm. And now any any type of um, BP that we accumulate off a of level up, we want to make sure we pump it right back to our eight, our AT uh, gauge until it hits the 31 stat. And then we mm -hmm. can start putting everything back down to or back on to attack. Yeah, I mean, he should be able to hit that 31 mark. 
Uh, the reason it's 31 is because once you start pumping stats into after, it doesn't actually end up making a huge difference to your ATB speed. So we stop at 31 and start pumping all the points into offense again. But that'll come after we do a boss fight in a little bit, but he's still got a little bit of way to go before that. Little interesting thing about this screen, if you were to go climb up a little lower, you'd actually go into the screen below and have to travel up. But if Chris moves up to the point where he did and then climbs, it'll put you on this screen early. Go. We got one more random fight. Oh, I guess it's not random. It happens every time. Quick draw again. Very nice. And the one turn. So there you go. Quick draw working to your advantage. And now Chris is going to do a little bit of like kind of just heal reload prep for the upcoming boss, which is the centipede, which is probably the hardest, hardest just straight up boss in the game for a few reasons. I'll let him do his menu. He's going to clear out most of his cure Ds. He's going to keep one for the museum. He's actually going to hang on to two, which is a good idea. Just a good idea. Safe. Yeah, just to be safe. And now he'll go into the centipede fight. And I guess I'll try to explain it a little bit. So centipede, big centipede. What do you, uh, what do you expect? But anyway, so Chris is going to start off by taking, uh, not having quick jaw already kind of annoying, but he's going to start by hasting. Hasting is nice because speeds up your ATB and speeds up Aya, so helps you dodge attacks while putting more attacks of your own out. Lucky. Yeah, I was pretty lucky, but, you know, we'll take it. So here we go. The centipede is about to split into four spots, and Chris is trying to get a shot off. Oh, that was really unlucky. Didn't hit any of them. But, so what happens is when the centipede splits into the four shots, if you target and shoot right away, uh, Aya will only target one of the body parts for whatever reason. So Chris was a little unlucky there that none of the shots hit at all, but uh, he's in good shape here. He's got a ton of medicine and whatnot. So now he's just going to try and position himself where he has the opportunity to hit the most pieces of the centipede at one time. He's doing a really good job so far. Most shots are hitting for max damage, doing a smart dodge here. Uh, going to re-up his haste, obviously, moving quick, shooting quick. What? Well, what could go wrong? That's what you want. Let's see how he finishes it out. Not too bad, procking some medicine. Ugh. This is annoying. Hopefully when they jump here, they put together. All right, well, he killed it anyway. One more. Once you're down to one, you're kind of in the clear. You're like exhaling a little bit. Yeah, and it's, we got good. And he's done. So that wasn't too bad. So like when you don't get any of those shots on the split, it makes the next phase a little uh, a little sketchy. But Chris dealt with it very well. Uh, rewarded for that, you get a gun that uh, if you have the M10, you will just menu these stats onto. But since Chris has the micro Uzi, he's actually going to take the ice bullets from that gun and put them on the micro Uzi. And I want to say that the sound isn't annoying, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, unfortunately, ice bullets do make a slightly unpleasant sound that you'll have to listen to for the next, uh, like, 20 minutes. But at the expense... So a lot of enemies were about to head into the museum the second half of day five. Uh, mo a lot of the enemies in there are weak to ice bullets and um, makes a big difference between the micro Uzi and the M10 to have those ice bullets do a disc change again chris is on a pstv so there's not a physical disc change just has to just has to click some buttons smartly not soft locking <laughs> <laughs> not you for personal experience or anything but if you happen to open the disc or try to switch the discs too soon before you're prompted you will actually soft lock the game Again, I never did it. It wasn't me. I'm, it was yes. my friend. It was my friend, um, RJ Smogget. 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 Okay. <laughs> yeah, Smogget. I'm sorry. It was, so Chris, it was a, twin, a twin friend. <laughs> Chris <laughs> smartly avoiding the soft lock. <laughs> <laughs> and now he'll leave the uh, subway and go straight to the museum. Museum is a big maze, basically. Lots of rooms that look the same, lots of floors. Uh, can be very 
taxing to figure out where to go, if you are unaware. We get into the lobby and we see some guy in a lab coat and I was like, oh, who could that be? Who's that right. guy in the lab coat? Freeze! No. Who is it? <laughs> I don't know how many people we've seen with lab coats in this game, but it could literally be anyone. At this point, I wonder when that gun will be shot. <laughs> yeah, never. Never. Mm. I mean, you don't even have a pistol on her person, but she keeps pulling one out from somewhere. <laughs> She's got secret stashes that we're on, we don't know about. <laughs> yeah. Here you go. First encounter with a scorpion. Uh, these guys are actually could be pretty scary. Um, mm hmm nice we got our quick draw proc always always good to see uh these scorpions aren't weak to ice so normal damage from the bullets they're not resistant at least but sometimes you can get caught in some attack patterns like when you shoot it it'll always attack in front of it so as long as you can kind of stay off to the side you can avoid it nicely done uh, but they do have an ability that can poison you and they can hit for upwards of like 180 damage you can get too tapped by their moves too just because of hitboxes and weirdness like that so they can easily dole out like a high 300 hit on you and just kill you if you're unlucky. But here we go. We got uh, raptors and the little green dinosaurs. The raptors, the blue dinosaurs are weak to ice bullets. So you'll see him kind of pound on them when he gets a crit. 117 damage is ridiculous. Insane. Yeah, yeah ridiculous. And then you kill those dinosaurs, and Aya's like, what? Dinosaurs? Like, she didn't just fight a giant, like, 30-foot centipede in the subway, and a giant scorpion. And oh, yeah, I can't, I can't hear the ice bullets. Yeah, I can't hear the ice bullets, so I kind of forgot about them. But enjoy! Because whether they're doing the ice bullet effect or not, you get to hear them. All of it. All of it. All of its icy glory. So as this place being a maze, there's a lot of opportunities for refighting and whatnot. Uh, we'll try to highlight skips or variations of fights that he's getting that aren't the norm. Because also, this is one of the only places where when you trigger a fight, you could get a like different fights in general. A lot of the times is throughout the most most part of the game, you'll go and trigger a fight. It'll always be the same amount of enemies. Like it'll always be those three bats when you first get into the sword. But this place can have some slight variations. And we'll see if he gets anything interesting or annoying. But so far, we haven't come to any of that. This is a scripted fight with three armadillos. And this is like a fight where the ice bullets really stand out in my mind. Like you hit for way more damage with ice bullets than you do with the M10 here. The M10 is just a lot slower. It's like crits are hitting for 91. Like the M10, your crits hit for like I don't know, 50 or something like that. It's it's really low. Another thing about the museum too on day five is this is this day, even though there is a sixth day, that sixth day is pretty much the final boss. <laughs> um, this would, I would say, would be kind of like the final dungeon um, if we had to say it. So before we even get to fight the final boss in this area, we need to leave on level 33 because level 33, oh, I, I picked up a lot of junk I didn't want. Um, level right. 33, she learns her, her, you know, OP move called Liberate. And that can go up and hit a target or multiple targets for um, an insane amount of damage. In other words, it's broken. Yes. And we want that broken. Yeah, we like broken. Before we leave. Yes. Also, while she's doing Liberate, she's completely safe. Nothing can mm -hmm. move. It's just that animation and her pounding damage into, into stuff. Yes. So it's, it's nice for a lot of different reasons. And all of those reasons are very good. There we go. So here's like a, a variation of the fight. You can either get one Raptor or two Raptors here. Two Raptors, good for experience. Raptors die really easily to ice bullets, so not that bad. Unlucky reload. 
<laughs> needed one more bullet. All right. A lot of the things, so at this point too, you heard Chris saying he doesn't want med two, med ones or med twos at this point. Uh, you're going to get mostly med threes, med fours, and ammo, so. A lot of these fights are just really good for replenishing the things you're missing, which is like a testament to the routing in a sense with the CM vest, like your medicine, none of the, none of these things, I mean, it is possible. I've, I know I've died to armadillos. Chris has died to armadillos. Uh, sometimes mm -hmm. you just get unlucky and they'll crit you over the threshold. But for the most part, these enemies won't really hit over your threshold and they'll just keep replenishing you with medicines, even if they do, or if they trigger your medicines anyway. And ammo. The only ones that really stink are these little green dinosaurs, because all they're going to give you is med twos or junk. And at this point, med twos are as good as junk. But they're kind of annoying. They, they're basically souped up crows. The crows are bad in the early game. These are bad here. And they hop around like a bunch of little jerks where you miss. There you go. The armadillo gave him 15 ammo, but the other two green dinosaurs gave him junk. No. So it's best. It, it's best. Even though you see something like that, you're just... This you're better on just to pass the whole thing, yeah. Yeah. Here we go. First fight, like, get a nice little cinematic for the pterodactyl. Uh, Kia Ryu Hunter's favorite dinosaur, the pterodactyl. <laughs> oh, I wish he was there to see it. Here. Oh, I, something tells me he might be. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Anyway, so they're pretty easy to kill. They're not, uh, they seem a lot more intimidating than they are. And for some reason, when you fight this pterodactyl, this one in particular, you'll get a med four every time. And then in the chest in the back of the room, there's also a med four. So nice to pump you up with some very strong medicine. Med four is about as strong as a single medicine as you can get. And speaking of variations of fights, this is a bad variation. This fight can either be one pterodactyl or this. And as you can tell, when it's this, they kind of split apart and do everything that's wrong with the world. Not really much you can do. You could haste maybe if you wanted to, but there's, there's no saying that that's actually going to help. And it gives you almost nothing useful. You're going to get either Med 2's junk and maybe one thing that's useful from the Raptor. Well, kind of unlucky. Kind of, but it, it is what it is. a lot better than what it could have, actually. Yeah. Well, and also, it's just like all of those things together don't have as much experience as a single pterodactyl will give you. Mm -hmm. So there's that to factor in. It's slower, and it's not good experience. But hopefully we don't run into too much of that. Everything else has been pretty, pretty on par. Look at that. I can't go back out because somebody locked the door behind me. <laughs> I wonder who can that be? I just, I just don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. <laughs> but here, here I, I is think like, it's a ah, I got one choice here. I can either, you know, <laughs> jump off this ledge and possibly die or, you know, sit here forever. She chooses to jump. Could you imagine if she just slipped off and fell to the ground? Like, game over, That's Super game, our superhero Aya fell off a cliff and died instead of being killed by the numerous dangerous animals. So that move that the pterodactyl does, that is what I'm holding an extra cure D for because that can go ahead and blind you. Um, and there are times, especially in this, in this area, this run, where you can get pretty unlucky by um, attacking multiple enemies and then getting slapped on with um, like a reload while he's doing that. And then you're just, you can't do anything but take that that dark um, uh, status ailment. Man, I can't speak right now. <laughs> no, that's all right. I was trying to find words, but you know what I mean. Yeah. So sometimes you just get unlucky, you'll attack and the timing's just off and you get blinded or something like yeah. that. So it's nice to have almost every runner will take at least one cure D into mm. this place. Like even even like top level, like it's just it's necessary. 
but uh, the, the screen Chris was just on with the scorpion and the raptor, the, it's a huge screen. So Chris is gonna, Chris energy shotted the scorpion. Really up to you what you wanna do, but uh, energy shotted the scorpion just so he can clear something out quickly and keep it condensed to just one thing he's fighting instead of two in a giant room where they spread out. Grabbing a little secret tool there. We'll need that a bit later. This screen is one of the worst. This is the better encounter to have, but this screen is super long and the armadillos like to do this move where they can go literally like up and down the whole thing. So unlucky targeting here for him, but at least he got rid of the pterodactyl. So now he's gonna use that movement from the armadillo to his advantage to drag it all the way to the edge of the screen so he can kill it. So actually not too bad. He had like one turn where I is like, I'll shoot the thing that's all the way across the room mm -hmm. instead of the thing in my face, but to be expected. So here we are, another huge room. Chris is going to energy shot something again. Pterodactyl should kill it. All right, good. I think he was using that, uh, that dark move. Yeah, it looked like it might have been. And yeah, he, that's... You see, energy I shot goes off. I looking and at the, best, the worst for it. <laughs> I uh, get stuck in place for a little bit, so... Good, good thing to kill it. Good thing to kill it. And that's something... That's also a slight variation, so... In the old route without the offenses, the way we use it now, you could not kill a... Uh, I was going to say a pterodactyl, man. I was going to do it. <laughs> I was going to do it. A pterodactyl. You can't kill the pterodactyl with, a one, with one energy shot, but with the uh, extra offenses and stuff that Chris has been picking up and putting into his gun, you actually can one-shot a pterodactyl, which is pretty nice. There, there's not much you could do about... Like you said, you're really... We're energy shotting just to make sure we can consolidate the room into less enemies. Because again, we're still using an SMG, which still does random targeting. So the less things you give it to target, the better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Now we go back. This was a little secret room. So we walked into the, um, I guess some sort of control room. We're gonna shut off some alarms, like or security measures or something like that. But uh, Chris is also using the secret elevator to go up to the fourth floor to grab um, another tool and a gun. It's a shotgun and a shotgun has burst on it. That'll become relevant in about eh, 10 minutes. But also in this room he's currently in, he picked up a, a submachine gun on the left that is important for one thing and one thing only, and we'll we'll get to that when we get there. But it's a pretty cool strat that was one of the more recent things discovered. It was discovered like right when I started running last year-ish. Uh, but we'll talk to that later because it is a cool strat, but we highlight it closer to when it's necessary. But... So I is now watching the secret Jello. Um trying to figure out why like how in the world are all these dinosaurs coming to life well she finally finds the answer it's the goo she man. was so desperately looking for yes it's always the good magical <laughs> magical mitochondria <laughs> so we're gonna see that bad boy later Pterodactyl. <laughs> really? I, this might actually just be a Power Ranger game, and Eve is really just Ivan Ooze. Ah, ah, there you go. I forgot all about Ivan Ooze. Oh, my word. How could you forget about Ivan Ooze? I kind of forgot about that movie. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris is going to trek back through these rooms. Actually skipped both refights, which, in yeah, my opinion, is pretty sweet. nice. I don't know what his experience is at, really, at the moment, but we have a few other fights I'm, before I'm we have to be concerned. 30. 30? So you're probably um, you're in pretty good shape. I'm going to look at my stuff, because there's two... All right, we're good. There's two items that we're going to pick up here, and you remember earlier in the run, I told you about my infamous run killers. Um, or was it here? Yeah, maybe. I, and if I didn't, this could be one of those where if you are not paying attention to your inventory and you have 
if you have like your inventory that's full, they're going to get back into your items because you have to pick up these two items no matter what. And if you select an item that you already have that's crucial to um, your last weapon change, then that can pretty much kill a run. Well, or at least kill your PB pace. So always want to get into this room with two empty slots. Yeah. At least with this room, if you if you sort your inventory like is commonly done by most runners, like if you sort it the way where your power, most powerful items are up top, you can't discard the gun you're using by just by replacing it with an item that's handed it handed to you. So if you do happen to forget about uh, having spaces, at least at this point, if you're sorting your inventory, you can't you can't leave without it, and you can't dot you can't like get rid of the gun. You're I love this slide punch. Yeah, I know. Out of nowhere, Oof. Daniel from the rafters coming in and uh, punch and clamp Falcon. in the face. Falcon punch. I also love this scene because Aya is just like, Aya is a borderline superhero with powers mm -hmm. and clamps like, I have a scalpel. And she's like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> she literally just killed two giant scorpions and this guy has and they, they, they have those tails and he has a scalpel and she's like i don't know what to do but luckily daniel's there to give him the haymaker save the day mm -hmm. daniel the forever homie coming in to help us out they're all trying to talk about what's going on they find that professor clamp is part of this whole spiel well now he tries to turn into the human torch to get rid of us. <laughs> he is IRL burning man. He is flame on. And uh, he's mad right now because as he's about to die, he realizes, oh, crap, you don't burn. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he just kind of like <laughs> smolders and you take his key and he's just like, oh, this wasn't all it cracked up to be. You take his key, he takes the L, and we <laughs> move on. Yeah, he just, like, basically becomes obsessed with Eve and is helping her along the way. Here we go, more refights, getting this. This is the crappy variant. Again, this could be a single pterodactyl or this. Luckily, only one little trash goblin and two raptors. I like these damage rolls. I'm loving these damage rolls. See, I feel like that fight took a lot longer than it should have, but we digress on to the next room. So now that he's had two fights in that room, the percentage when you come through a third time, it's the only room we'll go through a third time, uh, the the fight the chance goes in, is again cut in half. So when he goes through again, it's a one in four chance. So spoiler alert, he's coming through that room again. But <laughs> uh, it's only a twenty five percent chance to get a third fight in the in the room. Meanwhile, he's just pounding on these enemies with ice bullets. <laughs> Jesus. All right. Oh. Yeah. Use. to do a little healing up uh let's reload his guns sort his inventory all that fun stuff because he's gonna do a, start a tiny little boss gauntlet i'm at level 30 so we want to at least at the end of these two make sure that we are around 33 yeah so, i mean these these next two he's gonna this is the first of two bosses he's about to fight these next bosses give massive experience so he's gonna be very close uh, we have a check for after the second boss he fights uh, where we'll know exactly what he needs to get to 33 if he's not there already. It's possible he could be 30. It depends how far into level 30 he was when he started these fights. So this first fight against the uh, Triceratops, uh, it starts the fight out with this wacky head plate uh, that significantly reduces damage. And what it does is, uh, when it does this charge it, attack that it's currently doing, it actually beefs up the amount of damage. It may not be good. So it's a little okay. spooky, because 
Okay, you procced. There you go. I was gonna say a little spooky. Unfortunate though, like you had killed the shield with the energy shot, but since he was already mid doing the charge, he still hit you with it before the face yeah. plate came off. But now that the face plate's off, the, the thing's pretty tame. Its charge attacks will do only contact damage and it'll start doing this electric attack really often, which is easily dodged by standing directly to the side of its face. So we're through. I believe that fight put Chris to 32. I won't have to worry about healing because this automatically heals me to yeah. full health. Good, RJ. Sorry, I cut you no, off. No, that's okay. I, I'm actually... I'm looking at the GDQ stream to see where your AXP is at. I'd be really surprised if you weren't at 33 after this fight. And if you're not, you're going to be extremely close. So you're in good shape. All right, so boss number two. Uh, the T-Rex we saw earlier is somehow up there, but now it's <laughs> Well, I don't know what it's doing up there. I don't know how it got there, but now it's coming back. <laughs> and you'd think that, like, since this one's second and it's a T-Rex compared to a Triceratops, that it's actually, like, a harder or scarier fight. But sometimes this fight can be very tame and easy, but we'll see what kind of T-Rex Chris yeah, gets today. Gets me. What he's looking for in this first phase is a fire attack. So far he started with a melee, another melee, but Chris got out of the... Oh, dude, the hitbox. The hitbox, dude, Chris. the hitbox is ridiculous. Uh, oh, you're getting the... You're like, getting the... Oh, you keep getting it. Oh, that's so unlucky. Oh! <laughs> oh, you have your revive. <laughs> I know. This is crazy. Yeah, usually oh, what this guy does is spam goodness. a fire attack. But for some reason, man, he's just being a pain in the butt. All right, so Chris is, I think, at this point, he's kind of over that halfway threshold. Once he's over that threshold, what the T-Rex will do is start spamming this head, this, like, laser or force energy attack. Oh, nope, he's not quite there yet. That's going to hurt. Not too bad. You could get hit like four times by the fire, but not too. He should be very close to being done if this doesn't do it. Ah, gosh, look at me. Commentator's curse. That's all right. But that energy shot is easily dodged by just standing next to his feet. There you go. Nice. And you're through. Not too bad. Okay. Do you want to grab so, a third revive? Yeah, I'm gonna grab that revive. Okay. I didn't know if you were if you knew about it because it's not one that people generally will get ever. Yeah, but so no, you, you're I'm, already I'm, at level 33, so you don't have to worry about that. Knowing my luck, I, yeah, I'm. That hitbox was pretty pretty gnarly. All right, so here we're gonna make our get our last gun. The run. Kinda. Oh my goodness, dude. Look at the attack. Yeah, it's crazy. So it's the M8000, which is a pretty ridiculous pistol. Um, and what we do is obviously we'll take our stats from the Uzi. We're done with the Uzi. Sayonara ice bullets. I know you're all really depressed that you can't hear the <laughs> ice bullets anymore. But we put, take those stats. And then the shotgun that we went to the secret room for, we're going to take the burst ability from it and put it on the pistol as well. So now we have a shotgun pistol that hits like crazy amounts of damage. Burst is nice for these next coming fights and it's nice for the next boss fight we have. Um, you'll... <laughs> you got the 25% chance fight, mm -hmm. nice. And it's the crab version again. But you'll see the shotgun effect in action. Uh, he targets one enemy, but the burst allows him to hit others around the enemy he's targeting. Nice. Also, the pistol just has incredibly crazy high stats just from the gun he menued over. So this gun is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous before the new the new uh, routing, and now it's just obscene. At least you skipped that fight, but you're going to have to fight this scorpion. All right, you can no, go up. I'm, I'm 33. Oh, yeah. 
Revive. You, you could, yes. you could uh, say you can go through. Nope, I would nope, the scorpion nope. takes like a of only a few hits, so it's not that big. Of a oh, deal. thank you. I I should get that revive. I want I yeah. want a blade save. So I don't like the way the hitbox went. So we're gonna take these extra two fights. Um, normally I would just go up the stairs and continue on, but I, in a way, didn't expect Senor T Rex to to do me in like that so yeah it's a good call because the next the next boss fight is a little uh scary just in general you can you could play it pretty safe if you take your time with it but it is nice to just it's peace of mind because you just you never know the game is weird you saw the hitboxes he dodged the attack and got hit on the upswing and it still counted so like, that stuff kind of yeah. just happens the entire time and will continue to happen until the game's over <laughs> you are having some great <laughs> luck <laughs> Now all we need is for me to use that revive there. Oh my <laughs> god, I would have died. I would have died. Yeah, I, I would have too. Trust me. <laughs> Things would have gotten a lot more YOLO-y. <laughs> there you go. Quick little cutscene here. Don't have much to talk about because you're already at level 33, so... For you to be at level 33 already, you have gotten more fights than you need, which isn't a bad thing for a marathon run. You better safe than sorry. Um, but so the refighting in the museum actually wasn't very kind to him, but that's also a testament to what I was saying about how most of the refights before this day are pretty inconsequential to your XP as a whole. Usually, it's almost always better to dodge the early refights and get the refights here because you just you pump out so much damage. The fights are about the same speed, but they just give you so much more experience. All right, so that's the last normal encounter you will take for the entire run. And, you know, I hope you enjoyed that little cutscene because now we get to go into an 11 minute cutscene. And I am not exaggerating. <laughs> we get very Pregger's Eve here. Hmm? And I was just like, I don't know what I'm looking at. It's just really cool imagery. Like, it's eerie and odd. Oh, it's very odd. There's no... There is no uh, way around it, but... I, say, I think like, that's, the, that's the appeal to the game. Yeah, for sure. And, and like I say, I think these cutscenes actually really hold up very well. Like, it's not like... I mean, obviously, graphics have come a long way, but these look pretty good for 1998, and they still really hold up. So, I see chat, they're, they're wondering why she's pregnant. Well, day four, when we were in the hospital, Eve ended up going to the bank and ended up making that withdrawal to make herself pregnant. Um, and that's, that's where you find all that out. So we got that, we got there late, and now she's on her way to trying to birth the, the ultimate being. And so Eve, the mitochondrial goo here going full kaiju on us uh, mm. so is like in entwined with like Eve in the sense. So the, the mitochondrial goo knows Eve's in danger. So it comes to save her. There goes the gun pointing again. No yeah, bullet well. shooting. I, at this point, I'm convinced there's just not even bullets in the gun. <laughs> she just points it. Right. More of a pointer. Yeah, it's just it's just for show. Meanwhile, 
Daniel and Maeda just stoop chilling on the the stairs mm -hmm. of the museum. They jumped out like a second story window, like no less than ten minutes ago, and they're just like hanging out, completely broken leg free. <laughs> mm-hmm. Just remember, they landed on a big pile of snow. <laughs> yeah, they found Twin the only window <laughs> above a big pile of snow. <laughs> yes. As you can see, there is lots of snow on the ground in New York City. That This little part of the cutscene is basically explaining why Eve is the way she is and why Aya is the way she is in this whole situation. And it's like, when when Aya was a kid, she had a twin sister named Maya. I don't know why their family would name them Aya and Maya. That's like literally the same name without a letter. But anyway, they were in, they were in an accident and uh, Aya has one of Maya's eyes. That's why Aya has two different colored eyes. And this hasn't been brought up at all by us or anything, but she does. It's because she has one of her sister's eyes. And I think Eve, or Melissa Pierce, the actress from the play, actually has um, uh, something from uh, Aya's mother. And Aya's mother is, like, loosely, loosely tied to the book plot uh, somehow. And uh, basically... It's just like they have these organs where they're tied to the book where they have this whole situation with the mitochondrial Eve and whatever, blah, blah, blah. And Melissa Pierce's body kind of rejects or like the, the organ takes over Melissa Pierce's body parasitically, whereas the one that gets put into Aya's body kind of works symbiotically. And that's the whole story in a nutshell. I'm telling, chat's telling me it's a kidney. So if you didn't read the chat yourself, chat, chat <laughs> says it's a kidneys. So that, that's, this, uh, this that's is about where as I go detailed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's about as detailed as it gets. Basically, they have organ, like loosely related to the book story. They, organs, Melissa Pierce didn't like it. Aya did like it. <laughs> Melissa Pierce got completely taken over by a parasite mitochondria and Aya got superpowers. Unfortunately, I don't have anything else to say about the plot, and there's still, like, six minutes left of this. <laughs> well, I did my best, we, chat! We can explain what's going on. So if you're wondering, the Marines ended up making their move, and they were trying to attack this. Well, as you can see or saw... It was a very, very poor failed attempt. So now they ended up locate, I don't know how, but they located Aya. And now we are on the ship. And they're going to tell us their plan of stopping the goo and Eve. Yeah, I, I think, like, the, the military is, like, I is our only real chance of stopping this, so they go and find her and uh, bring her to the ship. And then I is like, you know what? I'll do it. I'll stop this monster for you. They're like, okay, good. We said you're the only one. <laughs> you're, this is a real Luke, you're my only hope moment. Mm -hmm. I saw somebody say this was a Star Wars game, so, yeah, it's also <laughs> a Star Wars game. <laughs> It is a Star Wars Christmas game. <laughs> I'm here for it. <laughs> I like Christmas. Uh, I'm I running like Star it, Wars. so I guess I am here too. <laughs> I, don't know, I guess sometimes I think it could be brought into question whether or not we actually like the game or ourselves <laughs> while we are running it. <laughs> but they throw Aya in a helicopter to follow the other helicopters to chase after the big goo person that still has Eve. And I'm told that uh, the play the helicopter is on autopilot. Uh, Aya doesn't just know how to fly a helicopter. But it's fun to pretend. 
This scene is actually very cool in general. Like the whole breakdown that's going on now is, is very cool. Yeah, iZombie is our lore person in chat. Yes. Yes, she is. He is an aficionado, to say the least. And a cool person. Yeah, I would like to, uh, I would like to do the Chrysler building at some point. Like uh, to run or just like casually? Both. I, I haven't done it casually yet. That's don't one do, of those that I just never got to it. <laughs> don't, don't do the run. <laughs> Oh, I'm it's, pretty it's, sure the run is probably like. Oh, it's brutal, a super joke. But... No, it's a super joke. Oh, is it? Yeah. There's a communal new game plus file. That makes it very easy. Doing it like a straight up like on a, in a first playthrough on new game would yeah. be, or I don't think you can do it on new game. Like doing it on your first new game plus run would be very difficult. <laughs> I actually have something to add to that. I think, didn't Palmer do that? And it took him like 20 something hours. That yeah, sounds I think about he, right. He did try to do like a 100% run of the game. And I think it did take him about 20 ish hours. <laughs> oh my goodness. But a fun yeah. fact or something interesting about that, a runner, a Japanese runner, a Tune, actually did a full on run in Japanese, the Japanese version and found a glitch with uh, shields or with like the shields and whatnot where he could like duplicate stats or something like that uh which actually shortened the run by almost like eight hours it was pretty crazy i do not know that, the facts that is insane. i do not know the facts straight up but he did the runner he did find something that massively shortened the run But the new game plus file we have as a community is a bunch of playthroughs and the guns are just, it's one shot kill everything, literally everything. Which is a lot of time and effort by uh, yeah. Cactus and I think Crazy has his own new game plus file. So that's, that's tons of effort. I think we're we are we're vastly approaching the end of the cutscene. Here we go. Oh yeah. Who's flying the helicopter? I don't know, but she's just leaving it there. Hey. It's on autopilot. It'll 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 come home like a lost puppy. Okay. So our last final E fight is um interesting to say because uh she has two forms. She has this unique form <laughs> um where it looks like she she does look like she's coming out of a big giant meatball and then her <laughs> second form she's faster in a way um and she does she does stats mm, i guess she does status elements in this this form as well oh she does she that. ever um yeah she I, I would say the second form is easier um, it's just you have to make sure you get timing um, your shots put in mm -hmm. and then you can liberate. But this this form right here, the the meatball form is what we're going to call it, is. Uh, and I can't think. She suddenly has I a can't lot think more of hands. This. Yeah, I, I can't <laughs> think now of just other than a giant meatball. And that's disturbing. <laughs> you said meatball. <laughs> you can't get away from it. That's it. <laughs> It's spaghetti it's time. It's Mamma Mia split. It's spaghetti time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mm. Oh, I should have kissed East. Yeah. All right. So he's going to cast Haze here just to help him with the movement. Really, all you don't, you don't want to be grabbed by her ever. So you want to kind of just take two turns firing and then run away. That's okay. You don't want Yellow. that to happen. So there's your status effect. Uh, you won't move in the directions you think you're moving in. There he goes. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, boy. This is a little scary. <sighs> okay, she kind of goes, this this attack's good. All right. Oof. There you go. We proxim med forward. We can breathe again. 
Yeah, you don't want to be grabbed. Grabbing is the the bad part. Cause she does a couple different variations of attacks when she grabs you. Uh, there's one that's just straight up pounding you in the face with damage. There's status effects. There's all sorts of very uh, scary stuff. But he's through. And you'll notice that she has three parts to her body when he was shooting her, and that's where the burst pistol really comes into effect because he can attack all three parts at once. Really shorten the fight. And there's phase two. Oh, She's uh, significantly different looking. She's shed all of the baby weight. And what Chris is going to do is he's going to shoot twice. He's going to do two turns. This is the unlucky turn. She goes up here. You can't really do anything until she comes back. Just a big waste of time. And, and he's going to shoot her, and he's going to use Liberate for the first time. So we'll get that, and we get to see Liberate in form, which is super cool. I just think this move is super awesome. He turns into just like this... I don't even know. Creature. <laughs> this this super, uh, angelic form, I guess. He's this super creature and just beats up things. To do 250 damage for seven attacks. Like, nothing you have done has come even remotely close to that amount of yeah. damage. It's just super broken. And that's, pre that's pretty much it for Eve. Like, as yeah, soon as you get it. to this part, it's good, you know, casually or... I'm not casually. During a marathon safe run, we can take our time. Um, but when you're when you're going for like a personal best, you definitely want to try to get those hits in fast because she does that move to where she goes into the air and drops that arrow on you, which takes your defense down. And I already had a, a slow ailment, so my AT bar wasn't going up fast so you want to yeah. get those shots out quick yeah yep. and sometimes it's just unavoidable it's like the first thing she does and it's just like well yeah. guess I'm losing time <laughs> here we go that's the end of Eve she gives us a spooky little smirk and we're on to day six I think at this point they think it's over, but uh, we'll, we're gonna soon find out that we were actually a little too late to stop uh, the birth of the ultimate being. But first we're gonna do a little bit of kind of cleanup before we go into the big, ba the big final battle. I'm going to play it a little safe here. I'm going to go through my inventory real quick and see what I have healing wise. Um, I'm good at ammo wise. Oh, for sure. But, but I'm going to probably pick up some. Um, oh, what was that? OK, I'm probably going to go ahead and pick up some. Um, let me get rid of these. And you got two med fours. Probably wouldn't hurt to pick up the med fours. Pick up the the med fours and threes. Yeah, so this guy will give you anything you need to get the fight going. He'll give you four med threes, two med fours, and I think a buttload of ammo. Yeah, but we, we, we can do okay. ammo too, but we're good with ammo. Yeah, yeah. The drops were actually pretty favorable throughout the entire run of as far as mm. things he wanted to see. But the, as long as you could get to the end here with like 60 bullets in the ammo case, you're pretty okay. There and getting was a here time with less when, than that is pretty unlikely. Yeah, there was, a, there was a time when I started running as well. I was on PB pace. And, uh, well, no, I think this is, I was top 10 at the point. I was on PB pace and I ran out of bullets on on the second form. So I had to finish it off with the club only, with, with the club percent, <laughs> which yeah. then, yeah, which then took a good three to four minutes. Oh, it was, it was brutal. But, um, 
Yeah, running this game club percent too is an option that I may do one day, but I don't know if uh, I don't know if I'm willing to be that experimental at the moment. <laughs> I'll just uh, I'll just say that a normal person has never uttered the words. I think I might want to run this club percent one day, but Chris right. is Chris is our special our special guy. But yes, I. <laughs> I, I've been finding I've been finding myself attracted to challenge runs lately so oh god that, that's how I would <laughs> uh, put it the nicest way possible <laughs> well back to it like a saying we, we they find out very shortly that they were not in time to stop the ultimate being which just does a, a little uh, baby cry and uh, blows up a bunch of ships No, B, uh, I don't think I do. I want to do it. <laughs> nobody wants to do it. <laughs> nobody wants it. They think they want it, but they don't. Think they want it. They think they want it. <laughs> Here we go. Maeda wants to give Aya something, but Daniel is like, get out of here, you punk. All right, we had enough of this. Uh, <laughs> we had enough of this lucky charm crap. But little do little do they know if they would just let him give her what he wants to give her, this would probably be over in an instant. They could shave ten minutes off of the run. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> but alas. All right, here so we here are. we go. Final boss time. The final boss comes in uh, four forms, starting with baby form. So Chris will start by casting haste, and he's just gonna wail on it. The baby makes some pretty silly noises. Enjoy that. Now, I don't have any kids of my own, Chris. Is this what it's like to have a child? No. <laughs> All right. It's easy to say that uh, I have not experienced this. Okay, good. And good. Um, I hope no one ever does. All right, so, good. Yes. I mean, like I said, I'm just very inexperienced. I was not sure. <laughs> Now on to phase two, a little a little more complicated. Uh, shooting makes you realize that uh, this is two pieces. What so Chris will probably do here, shoot twice, and then gonna shoot, or he's just gonna go straight to lean, mm. which is fine. It's fine. Now we're kind of in an RNG dice roll. We want to see the bottom part, which it's getting attacked right now, get hit four times out of the seven. So we got two. Three. <laughs> Let's see, where's the last one go? All right, so three, uh, bummer. Well, the top part's probably gonna die, at least, so you just have to worry about the bottom part, and it should only be a couple pistol shots away. But the bottom part is actually very scary. This isn't the worst attack to see, because at least it's not doing anything else. Hey, right, three bullet shots, not too bad. He, jump, he jumps around pretty quick too, which is... And does like a surprising distance. a lot of damage. Yeah. But just like that, Liberate gets us to phase three. We get to uh, an adult form. Don't worry about the giant skin tab on the back. Yeah, don't worry about anything that's happening here. <laughs> so again, Chris is going to just do as much damage as he can while his PE bar fills back up. Nice crit damage. You want to you wanna do at least like seven-ish shots, but he's doing a lot more damage. That number is probably smaller than it used to be. Basically, he's just going to keep shooting him until his damage... Oof, that's, a, that's a scary move. Yeah, it is. Oh, you, do have nice. your, you do have your revive. At least. But this is good, because you're probably going to get hit and proc for... Oh, no, you died. Nice. So, probably at this point, yeah, just use Liberate and see what happens. Yes, this is handsome Squidward. We were <laughs> fighting. <laughs> I would, no, all right, now somebody needs to mod this game where he's like teal colored like Squidward, and I'm all in. So good. I'm all in. I'm all in on that. You know what? Now I want to remaster for PC so we yeah. can mod it. So I think he'll still be dead here just because of the extra damage yep. rolls. Mm -hmm. 
good. So easy peasy. Now we're on to the fourth phase, and we get to uh, talk about the micro or the uh, micro easy, the submachine gun that Chris kind of just picked up on the sly while in the museum. The MP D five W G X Y Z submachine gun. Uh, that gun has twenty five bullets in the clip, and it has a burst. I don't know the exact number, but it's like ten or twelve. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna equip the MP5 PDW and he's gonna use that to shoot uh, the ultimate being here because you have to do about 20-ish damage to move to the next phase. Uh, if you're lucky with your damage rolls, you could do it in one single turn, uh, but you will absolutely get to 20 damage with two. So it's a, nice, it's a fun little uh, thing somebody discovered, like why don't we grab this gun and just wail on it for one turn with it? Cause Which works out. Yeah, it works really well. It shortens the it shortens that phase pretty substantially. And uh, a good thing about the next phase we go into is that uh, we're going to get the gun replaced for us. So it's kind of efficient to use. You switch to the submachine gun, and then you uh, get given the gun you need. So this is kind of like a Resident Evil moment where you're kind of like back against the wall, and uh, you get handed like the super bullets and you get to use Maida's gun, which he gave you while we were in Clamp's office in the museum at the end. This is your rocket launcher tyrant moment. Tons of damage. This only takes uh, four turns, eight shots. One more, there you go. All right, and the boss fight itself is over, but we still have one more thing to do. Also sort of Resident Evil inspired. It's anxiety time. We have kind of a chase and escape sequence coming up here, and I am just gonna keep to myself and kind of let Chris just do it. I don't wanna distract him or anything like that. No, I and I can talk to it too. So All right, yeah. this escape, portion of it you want there are two crucial things number one you don't go back um the boss is a one hit kill he gets to you at any point you're dead another thing is you can't re-enter any room that you come that you go into you re-enter you're dead so at this point you know it it kind of <laughs> stack along with the music it can get pretty, you know, pretty intense quick. Uh, the second thing is you are, you can get to the point where you could get to the boiler room, but completely miss the boiler in general. So it will allow you to escape, but it will be game over once you escape instead of ending the game. So you got to make sure that you in the boiler room, you activate the boiler to explode and then you finish escaping. Um, time once we activate the um the boiler we'll have like maybe three more rooms to go and then time should be time should be on the last screen faded i think one thing about this part is they do a good job with the music making this seem very intense mm -hmm. when in reality it's actually not that bad as long oh, as you not. know where you're going, there is absolutely zero, zero percent chance that it'll ever get you. And you can even, when you get to each screen, you can either even take a second to look which way you're running. Like, it doesn't have to be, like, instantaneous, like, I need to be moving as soon as the screen's loaded kind of thing. But, I mean, obviously that's for the speedrun. First playthroughs, I'm sure people die here numerous times. And what's oh, yeah, really frustrating trolls. is you have to do the entire boss fight all over again. They have a broken phone. All right, so this is the final screen. As soon as we exit, time will be there. So, it, time. All right. Woo! Nice job, man. You did it. Not bad, not bad. No, not bad at all. So yeah, it was pretty, it was pretty decent run. Uh, pretty smooth, especially for Marathon. Um, yeah, we probably would have reset a while ago if I was doing PVs, <laughs> <Wow>. but... <laughs> well... You know, that's why, uh... 
it, it's good to show off this game, especially. Uh, we have a lot of newer runners who, um, it's awesome that they're running as well. Not only that, just the community in general um, is awesome to begin with. So I, I can't I can't express enough how thankful I am to to be able to get tips and just not even that, just to to meet uh, new people and you guys are are good. So thanks. All right. Well, while we're finishing up with this, uh, a couple of questions for you. Uh, one, do you have any shout outs you'd like to give to anyone? I want to shout out RJ. Uh, thank you for being on the couch, dude. Uh, I appreciate it. It helps a lot when you run the game. And not only that, like you just, I can focus on some things while I have someone as knowledgeable as you who, you know, can rip it out and explain what's going on. Um, pretty much my community. You guys are awesome. Uh, Palmer as well. Palmer's a really crucial, crucial dude who's, um, in the Parasite Eve community, who's an awesome dude, awesome speedrunner. I can you, you can't say enough good things about him. And uh, and for you guys for even having me on uh, a second time on speedruns of the crap. I again I appreciate it. And yeah, that's, that's what I got. All right. As well, anyone wanted to check you out on Twitch? Where can they find you? Uh, just Chris Naga right at Twitch TV. Um. I'm trying to get as more active as I can on the Twitter, but you know, I'm a boomer, so. <laughs> <laughs> I know who I, I am not well. Uh, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. But yeah, tw Twitch channel, you definitely uh, check me out. All right, we can watch the ending here a bit while we're wrapping on up, kind of see how it all ends, but. Yeah, so uh, I thought the run went well. I, I both, I want to thank you both again for being here, especially uh, around the holidays, so. No problem. I, li I laughed really hard on the inside when I heard your opening par prayer site Eve on Christmas Eve. I'm like, oh, hey, man. Hey, Christmas Eve's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see the, uh, I'm I'm up uh, on the screen while the uh, the game's also showing on the right. Uh, well, well. anyway, while the, that's playing up, we're to the final FMV, it's just been kind of an opera thing. So I'm going to take a moment to say thank you all, chat, for watching, and I hope that you have all been enjoying the run for tonight. It's always fun being able to show off games like this. And in all honesty, uh, the rest of the game is mostly mashing, as you'll be able to see uh, over here. Also, it always, uh, I don't see the exact same delay, so <laughs> I like I could see the exact time that it jumped over to the main uh, what's the word? Title screen. <laughs> but uh, once again, I do want to say thank you all for watching, and I hope that you enjoyed the ending of Parasite Eve. Uh, this has been Speedruns in the Crypt. It's a holiday version, and I've been your host, Dick Dysis. Uh, if you like me, you can check me out on, you know, pretty much everything. I have all that. And I tend to talk about uh, how I run these shows and how they go about. Anyway, uh, we can actually tune back into the uh, the game for a bit here. But for me, I just want to say I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day and or night. And after the final cutscene, we'll find someone to raid. So have a great night. Yeah. That was good. It was good. Yeah, you were fine. I got a little worried. I got a little worried with T Rex. <laughs> Jesus, man. I, it's just, I literally said I'd never seen that before and it just happened again. Bro, like, what? The worms, the worm hitbox was insane. <laughs> that was great. And I'm like, what What the heck? You know? And then, yeah, the T Rex hitbox. This was like, how am I getting hit by this thing that is already looked like he's pulling back? But, man. Whew. Yeah, that was, nah, that was good. Great. Yeah. Oh, man. I, I, <laughs> it's very challenging. Well, I, I'm, I'm pretty my, mild and tame with my language. But sometimes, you know, you, you got to... Yeah. Yeah.